All right. Court calls up the matter of State versus Ferreter. We're back in session on day four of the trial. Um, counsel, appearances, please. All right, for those that are present on Zoom, you will hear the audio, but during this stage of the proceedings, you will not be hearing the, or seeing the video because it's in camera. All right. All right, everyone may be seated. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, welcome back. I trust everyone had a good evening. Uh, we are here on day four, and we are in the state's portion of the case. Uh, and as you know from yesterday, we're in the uh, stage of the cross-examination of the witness. Before we begin, a couple things I need to address with you. Uh, first question is um, what you heard yesterday. Have any of you, uh, were any of you inadvertently exposed to any type of media coverage between last night and this morning regarding this case, either by video, print media, or blog, email, or anything? Anybody been inadvertently exposed? I let the record reflect that no one indicated in the affirmative. Second thing is we're, um, as you know, conducting this testimony uh, in camera with the uh, witness in another courtroom. So technologically, we're having to transmit the signal into this courtroom. Very, very important for me that all of the jurors be able to hear and understand what is being said. So if you have a problem hearing what is being said, please raise your hand. Do not be shy. Do not be afraid because I will stop the proceedings and make sure the question is restated or the answer is restated so that you do hear it. I also want to let you know that um, um, during your deliberations, you have the right to have any testimony replayed uh, that you wish to hear. And so if there were parts of the testimony that you didn't believe you heard well enough and you want to hear again during the deliberation, just let me know and that will be replayed for you, and my understanding is that the recording will come from the courtroom in which the witness was um, uh, testifying out of, and that um, perhaps the sound will be a bit better. Last thing is we have tried to work through some of um, the issues that I personally had with respect to the sound yesterday, and I hope that they've been resolved, um, but I can't guarantee it because I don't know how well you hear or not, and so if you have a problem still, you'll let me know uh, so I can take whatever measures need to be uh, taken to ensure above all, that you hear all of the testimony that's presented. So um, everybody understand that? So don't be shy if you can't hear so I can take whatever remedial uh, action I need to take. All right, so um, Mr. Wahid, uh, are you ready for your cross-examination? Yes, Judge, I am. All right, so you may proceed, sir. Thank you. How are you? I, you might be nervous. I'm just here to ask some questions. If you don't understand anything I ask you, just say I didn't understand the question. Okay. okay. Uh, let's start with your brother's name. It's correct? Yes. So you've been calling him, correct? Yes. So it, it, you want me to just call him whatever we're talking about? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. All right. So let's go back to Arizona. So some of what you talked about yesterday was Arizona, and some of it was Florida. Um, Arizona, you were there uh, from approximately what year to what year that you remember? Left around fifth grade, and then we came back in the middle of my sophomore year, so whatever time period that was. Okay. So you're in fifth grade. You think you were about, what, 10, 9, 10, 10, 11, something like that? Roughly. Okay. So, and then in sophomore year, how old were you? Okay. So you, you, the Arizona years were about four or five years, something like that. Okay. All right. So you were there for, and then you came back to Florida, and, and the Florida time period was, was, you said, around mid-late December of 2021, and then uh, in this case, we're taking it up to the uh, end of January of 2022. Uh, so in that time period, so that's about six weeks or so, correct? Right? Roughly, yeah. Okay. 
So substantially more time in Arizona, obviously, than this last time in Florida. Yes. All right. Let me ask you a little bit about your brother's medical situations. Um, you never went to the, the many, many doctor visits that he went to, correct? No. And but your parents went to those visits, correct? I assume yes. Okay. You don't you don't know if any parent went to a visit with a doctor? I didn't really. Okay. And you never obviously saw any of the medical reports that your parents saw, correct? No. And at some point you were told by your parents Objection as to hearsay? Sustained. Goes to effect on the listener judge. I'm going to sustain your objection. I'm sorry? Ms. Cochler, you were Nothing, nothing else. Ms. Coakley, are you renewing your objection? He's arguing the exception. Your Honor, I would say uh, that it goes to relevant. There's not relevant the effect on her. Sustained. On direct yesterday, you said that um, your brother wasn't allowed to have certain snacks, correct? Yes. All right. Um, and you're aware that he was, uh, they, your parents were trying to curtail the sugary snacks in his diet, correct? That's what they said. Okay, so you're aware of that, right? Yes. All right. And you didn't go to any of the um, mental health visits that your brother went to. He was seen a therapist. You didn't go to those, correct? When was this? This would have been in Arizona. He was going to a therapist. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Which would also mean you weren't aware of anything the therapist would have conveyed to the family in terms of his condition. No. Okay. So let's go back to the food snacks. Yesterday you said he was essentially not allowed to have food and snacks, but the other kids were, correct? Yes. All right. Were you aware that, did, did you think he, your brother at any point looked malnourished or in any way like he was getting too thin or anything like that? Yes. And when did you convey that to uh, any, I never, anybody? I never said anything. All right. And are you aware that the doctors he saw always found that he was appropriate? Sustained. Sustained, and it's an improper question because you're uh, assuming facts, not in evidence, Mr. Waid. The objection is sustained. Well, I'll be able to tie it up later, Judge. So it's a question of what she knows. I'm going to sustain the objection. Move on. Okay. Yesterday, uh, you said that uh, about the snacks, uh, that he, he wasn't allowed to have snacks. Isn't it true you do not know if when he was hungry that he actually ate snacks or not? You don't know that. Sorry, repeat that? Sure. You are unaware that when he was hungry, whether or not he actually ate a snack. You don't know that. He wasn't allowed to get his own snacks. You remember uh, talking to, you spoke to somebody under oath back on February 1 of 2022. And directing court and counsel, page 55, line 8. As to snacks, Okay. 
you gave a statement on February 1 of 2022. It was not under oath. And in that statement, you were asked, if he's hungry, does he get light snacks? And your response was, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. And you don't know uh, because you're not with him all the time. You're not always watching him. Uh, you're at school. You have other things going on in your life, correct? Yeah. And you you are you're a pretty smart child. You like reading a lot, correct? Yes. And you spend a lot of your time in your room reading by yourself, didn't you? Yes. Um, where, let me talk to you about uh, lights. Um, you were aware that he had not been sleeping well, correct? Yes. And he, in fact, told you he would stay up sometimes at 3 a.m. because he couldn't sleep. Objection as to hearsay, Your Honor. Sustained. Impeachment, Judge. Yesterday, from yesterday's testimony. I'm sorry, Mr. White. This is rebuttal of yesterday's testimony, Judge. All right, this is still hearsay, sustained. It's in it's impeachment judge. So you're not offering it for the truth of the matter asserted, correct? Correct. Correct. Solely for purposes of impeachment. Correct. Ms. Coakley, your position? There was no testimony as to any statement that I made on this topic, Your Honor. We didn't even discuss his sleep habits with this witness, so it cannot be impeachment. This witness talked about about the lights on the outside of the room and that they would the parents would turn off the lights all right so the, but the question the question relates to what rf told her with respect to how late he was staying up correct correct i'm going to sustain the objection you talked about um a few things yesterday. Some of them were in, in, in Arizona. Some of them were in Arizona and Florida. Uh, you talked yesterday about your lack of contact with um, during those six weeks in Florida. Remember that? Yes. All right. And reality is you were, you were pretty busy doing homework or at school or at your sister's games during that time. And you didn't really have any reason to go to Rome's work, correct? Yes. And you spend a lot of your time in your own room reading, correct? Yes. You also talked yesterday about uh, not going to your events. And I, it was that, you're, you must be talking about in Arizona, right? Yes. Going to show you three pictures. Back on the Take a look at each. Tell me, uh, do you recognize what those pictures are? Of yes. Okay. And I'm going to mark each one for identification. A little number. So the one I put a card on that says number four, um, what is that a picture of? U of A band. I'm sorry, say that again? U of A band. Okay. And the, the picture marked number five, what is that a picture of? A concert. Okay. And the picture with the card number six on it, what is that a picture of? Spelling bee. Spelling bee. Okay. Yes. All right. And these are all events, um, your events, correct? Yes. All right. This time I move these uh, defense four, five, and six into evidence. Your Honor, uh, uh, state would object as to relevance. I also have some more specific objections about the time frame. Relevance in response, um, Mr. Waheed? 
It's Arizona. These are events that this individual, this witness, went to in Arizona? This individual went to in Arizona, correct. I have more questions. I don't want to get something in front of the jury, Judge, but I, yes, I was there. These, this is in response directly to when yesterday she said that we did not attend her events. And I just established that before I showed the picture. All right, well, she's already said that he didn't. So um, right. I'm going to sustain so the objection. I'm sustaining the objection. Four, five, and six are not coming in. They're marked for ideas, uh, defense exhibits four, five, and six. All right, so you need to do a sidebar. Uh, Mark, escort the jurors into the jury room. Uh, Mr. Waheed, you need to come up to, to this courtroom for the sidebar. You don't have copies up here, Ms. Murad, that I can look at while we're waiting? Well, four, five, and six is what he had him marked as. So it tells me even less. So. All right. Well, that's why I asked for him to come up here to be part of the sidebar. Yeah, it should be just momentarily. All right, come on up, counsel.
Thumbs up, and then we'll bring the jurors out. Ms. Murad, you did you put evidence cards on all of the ones we just dealt with? Okay. Okay. All right. But um, Mr. White, it's clear on the numbers that we were assigning to them up here. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're good. All right, Mr. Wahid, it looks like we're still waiting on Ms. Coakley. Is that her that just came in? Okay. All right, so um, Mr. Wahid and Ms. Coakley, are both of you ready to proceed? Yes, we're here. Yes, sir. All right, uh, Mark, um, Ms. Murad, you're ready to proceed? Yes. Ms. Black, all right, you can go ahead and bring the jurors in. Yes, sir. All right, everyone may be seated. All right, so for the record, the court is going to receive and accept Defendant's Exhibit 4 in evidence over objection. Um, court is going to sustain the objection as to Exhibits 5 and 6. Um, however, the defense is not precluded from using those documents uh, for purposes of refreshing recollection. Um, Mr. Waheed, you clear on the court's ruling at this point? 
All right, you may proceed. So, Fiona, if you look at the picture where number four is, um, the card is number four there. What's that a picture of? Uh, Arizona Bandit. Okay, and... All right, she uh, needs to restate that. She needs to restate that answer because my jurors did not hear it. So uh, state your answer again, ma'am. As loud as you can speak, Fiona. Arizona Band Day. Better. Arizona Band Day. Yes. Band. So I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat the answer here every once in a while to make sure, and you just agree or don't agree with me. So you just said Arizona Band Day. Yes. And uh, the, in that picture uh, is you with the awesome hat, correct? Yes. And you're holding an instrument. Yes. 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 And what's that instrument? A flute. A flute. So that's what you play? Yes. Do you still play the flute? When I want to. Okay. And next to you in that picture is whom? Directly next to me is my brother. Oh, which brother? Okay. And in front of him is whom? And next to... So that's all your siblings in that picture, correct? Yes. So they, they did attend and did attend that day, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now... I think the court already moved it into evidence, but it's my habit, so I'm moving... Four into evidence? I've already received and accepted four in evidence, and uh, I've dealt with five and six already. Okay. There, um, this objection sustained, but you can use them for refreshing recollection. Yeah. So, uh, Madam Clerk, are you clear on the court's rulings on that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Good enough. Okay. Showing you five. Do you, do you recognize this picture? Vaguely. Okay. What do you remember it from? It was a concert I did. Okay. So you remember uh, that you that you attended a concert and your brother uh, was present, correct? Yes. Okay. And then looking at uh, six, do you remember now attending your spelling bee? You're going to look at the picture, though. I am. Okay. Who's that? I can't get this here. I can't get this one. Who looks like okay. So do you recall him? Sorry. Do you recall him attending your spelling bee? Yes. Yesterday, you said that he uh, did not do his homework in the house, correct? Not often. Not often. <clears throat> yes. Okay. And that would include in Arizona, correct? Yes. Showing you what's been previously marked as Exhibit 7. Do you recognize, um, what is that picture of? Me and doing my homework. Okay. And how do you recognize that? What do you mean? You know it's you because it looks like you? That's me. Okay. I just wanted to make it sure. Okay. So that is a picture of you. And who else is in that picture? There's one in the background. All right. And what's he doing? Homework. All right. At this point, Judge, I move uh, Defense 7 into evidence. All right, so I've already heard sidebar arguments on this. Court's going to receive and accept Defendant's Exhibit 7 in evidence over objection. You may continue, Mr. Waheed. Yes, Judge. Giving the clerk the evidence item. I don't lose track of that. Yesterday, you also said that 
and was not allowed to attend family events. Do you recall saying that? Not all the time. All right. So he attended family some family events. Some family events. Okay. And when he attended those family events, those would include trips outside when you, you know, to, to things that were like uh, going to see like uh, the Aerospace Museum, for example. I don't recall the Aerospace Museum, but he would come sometimes. Going to show you <clears throat> defense eight. You know what that's a picture of? Okay, so it's a, it's a, it, what's, what's, uh, who's in the picture? Anybody you remember? Yeah. Okay, do you remember the people in the picture? Yes. All right. Do you remember where this picture was taken? No. All right. You recall taking um, family hikes, which included yes. and to Sabino Canyon. Yes. You recall the, your family, including Russ, spending time at the Tucson Hotel JW Marriott Pool. No. Showing you what's been marked for identification in defense 10. Does that help refresh your recollection? I don't remember this. All right. Yesterday, you said he was not allowed to play outside, correct? I believe I said not usually. Okay. But he would be allowed to play outside, correct? On occasion. He would play outside in, uh, in the backyard in Arizona, correct? I think he would call it a backyard. All right, well. All right, hold on a sec, Mr. Waheed. We're getting noise from outside that's interfering with our ability to hear her, so let that pass as the train. All right, I'm going to ask you to restate the last question and uh, give the witness a chance to restate her answer. My last question was whether you recall playing outside in the backyard in Arizona. Yes. Okay. And he would play at times with the other kids in your family, correct? Yes. You recall all of you kids playing uh, at a friend's house swimming pool in Arizona? That's too general. 
Well, a, a swimming pool in Arizona that was not your home, but the home of a family friend. I'm not sure I'm understanding what you're asking. Let me let me show you something and see if it helps you narrow down where I'm at going with this. Showing you what the mark of identification is defense 12. Do you recognize that location and the people in that picture? I don't recognize the person. You don't I have to get a clearer answer from you. I heard you say you recognize. I recognize my siblings, but I don't recognize the person in the middle between my brother and my sister. Okay. And your brother, that's correct? Yes. All right. And you're at a swimming pool, correct? Yes. And your house didn't have a swimming pool, right? Um, which one in Arizona? Yes. It did have a swimming pool. Okay. Is that your house in, in Arizona swimming pool? No. All right. So you're... You remember you so is it fair to say <laughs> that there were times where you all went out together, including going to friends' houses? At times, Ronan? yes. Okay. Yes. You recall going to Mount Lemon in Arizona with your brother? Ron. Yes. And that was a like a family vacation day, correct? Yes. Was, uh, was uh, did you celebrate, did your family celebrate birthdays? Yes. And by, by celebrate, how would they do that? Bring out a cake, everyone, family sitting around the table, that sort of thing? Mm, yeah. Uh, involved in martial arts, correct? Yes. And your parents put all the kids, uh, other than kids very small, in some activities, correct? Yes. And you you were involved in track at some point at basic? I did not go to basic. Okay. Did you ever do track? Yes. All right. Was Ron doing track with you? Where? When you were doing track? I did track in two places here and in Arizona. All right. Let's talk about Arizona. Did we track in Arizona? Yes. I know you didn't like track, so you didn't do track as long, correct? No. Yes, well, yes, I do. Yeah, I don't like running either. Okay, so let me ask you about uh, tours. So yesterday, do you remember you saying that I would be outside moving shells? Yes. That's here in Florida, correct? Correct. And that was this current time in Florida from end of December of 21 to the end of January of 22, correct? Yes. 
And these, this, the house your parents uh, moved into in Jupiter had in front of it uh, a tree with a bunch of shells around it, correct? Yes. Right. And they didn't want the shells, so there was an effort to remove the shells slowly and get rid of them, correct? Yes. And that's what you're talking about that was working on, correct? Yes. You had chores in the house too, didn't you? Yes. And so did no. Yes. And the types of chores that you and no had would be mostly inside the house cleaning up, that sort of thing, correct? Yes. And the types of chores that uh, your brother had were mostly outside things, right? Yes. But we had uh, posters in his room at some point, correct? Yes. In fact, uh, your parents got those for him for Christmas, of, uh, one of the Christmases, correct? I don't remember. I'm going to see if I can refresh your recollection with a statement you made on February 1, 2022. Our court counsel to page 24, line 13. You just read it to yourself. When you're done reading that, let me. So there were some posters that your parents got for Christmas, correct? Yes. And at some point, you shredded all of these posters, didn't you? He did. He used to also have a dresser in his room in Arizona, correct? He did. And this dresser was taken out of the room, correct? Yes. And it was because he was ripping his clothes up when he got upset, correct? Yes. And the dresser was placed just outside of his room. This is in Arizona, right? Yes. Yes. So in late January of 22, uh, had run away, correct? Yes. He had run away at least two times before that, correct? Yes, but not here. In Arizona? Yes. Yeah, it's you. Uh, and your parents at some point um, had a family meeting. I think it was when you first ran away and asked you all how you felt about him running away. Correct. I don't remember. Referring court and counsel to the statement of February 1st, 22. Page 32, line 16 at the end of the page. I'm going to give you this. Read from this line at the end of the page until when you're done. So your parents had a family meeting the first time you ran away. They asked you all how you felt about it. Yes. And your position was that. Objection as to hearsay, Your Honor. As to the answer or to the question? Uh, to both, Your Honor. All right. Overruled as to the answer. Um, 
and overruled as to the question as phrased. You may answer. Yeah. Ask this question. The question was, what was her position? Yeah, yeah. The question was exactly what. What was your position about um, when they had those meetings? They asked you how you felt about it. What was your position? And let, let me be clear. I, I'm allowing her to state what her position was, not what she said. She can testify as to what her position was and that not be hearsay. So I'm going to allow that. Can you repeat what you're asking? Yes. So I'm going to go back to the previous question where I asked you. They had meetings. When you first ran away, they asked you all how you felt about it. What was your position on that? On him running away? On how you felt about that. How did you feel about that? Him running away, yes. First time. Do you want me to ask the question again, again? No, I heard you. I'm just trying. Did the jury hear that? All right, you need to re have her restate that answer. She said, I heard the question. I'm just trying. Okay, so. She's done. All right. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Okay, all right, take your time. When you. I'm just. I'm sorry. When you ran away, um, I wasn't. Really sure what to think. I was surprised, but also tried to understand why he would do it. Um, I was worried, I guess, is one answer, is my answer. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question, though. All right. I'm going to move on. Is it, is it fair to say that when when he would be getting in trouble back then, at, uh, when, when you know, around the time frame in Arizona, that you didn't often know why he was getting in trouble? I didn't know the specifics of why he got in trouble. Did you did you think at any point that he was being wild or energetic, anything like that? He was hyper. Okay. Did you ever notice it was very difficult to calm him down once he got going? Yes. Did you ever see your parents try to make efforts to calm him down with words? <laughs> Yes. Yesterday you said that uh, he got in trouble and things would be taken away from him. Yes. Well, there were times you got in trouble with your parents, correct? Yes. And they would take things away from you, correct? Yes. Like your, like your electronics, right? Yes. And you had an eye touch, and that got taken away at some point? Yes. And you're aware of would steal from inside the home? Yes. Uh, you're aware at some point he stole other people's credit cards? Yes. He, in fact, stole your money at one point? Yes. 
And you and your sister did not do these same types of things, correct? No. You're aware that it was asked to write sentences at some point? Yes. And the sentence was usually, I will not steal, correct? That's one of them. Another one was, I will not lie. Also another one. talked about the, the house in Tucson. The address was, was it 4245 uh, East Havasu Road? Yes. Okay. Uh, you remember what the layout of that house was? Yes. I'm going to show you something soon. So that house, um, there was, so you walk in the front of entry and you're in the living room, correct? Yes. And then there's um, a, a dining room to your left and a family room to your right and the kitchen is the back on the left. Yes. And then if you go to the left uh, through, through, a, through a, a door, um, there's a bedroom, correct? Yes. Um, was that your bedroom? On the left? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then if you went opposite your bedroom, down some stairs, you get to the garage, correct? And the way that was situated is my bedroom, there's a laundry room, down the stairs is the garage, and then there's the bathroom. The, the bathroom is in the, in the hallway between the garage and your bedroom. It's on the other end of my, so if I'm looking at my bedroom here, the bathroom's on my right. Okay. And the other three bedrooms were on the far opposite side of the house from your bedroom, correct? Yes. So you had to cross from your bedroom through the dining room through the family room and living room to the other three bedrooms on the other side of the house. Yes. And before she was born, uh, when was in one of those rooms, correct? Yes. Um, and so it, it's fair to say it was pretty far from your room in terms of the distance within that one house, correct? Yes. And fair to say that you uh, moved into a room in the garage uh, around the time that was born, right? Yes. One moment, sir. I have no other questions. All right, thank you, Mr. White. Ms. Coakley, do you have any redirect? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, you may begin. So, Your Honor, I want to start with the layout of the house. Mm -hmm. um, well, you talked about being able to hear some of the physical abuse that was happening. Yes. What room was went in at that point? In the garage. Okay. And so, the location of your bedroom in the Arizona house, as it related to the garage, was close to the garage. Yes. Um, and so you could hear the physical abuse when it was happening there. Yes. Um, and did you, in fact, see an instance where he was pressed up against a wall? Yes. Okay. Were his feet on the ground when that happened? I don't remember. Okay. Did that uh, incident 
scare you? Yes. What were you worried about? Um, that he was grabbing too tight and that something worse than just hurt might happen. Like, can you just say that she, a little louder? She needs to restate Something that. Worse than just, um, the... Okay, worse like how? Jury hear that? Mm. All right, stop. Let's have her restate that um, answer so the jury can hear it. So what were you worried worse would happen? Objection. O overruled. Um, I was worried that one day, um, that he might accidentally Objection. hurt Overruled. And he would accidentally kill. And is that based on the physical force that you saw? Yes. Um, and the level of anger and aggression you saw the defendant do towards your brother? Yeah. Is this emotional for you to talk about? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to think about my brother not being here, but it's not fair. Now, on cross-examination, the defense asked you about were there times you, they, you saw efforts to calm your brother down with words. What were those efforts like? Angry. Angry. Stern, not comforting at all. Okay. Is that how he was talked to and treated by both your parents, Tim and Tracy? Objection here, sir. Overruled. No. Um, at the time that it was happening to you, did some of the, well, you know, when you were living in the house, did you really understand whether or not what was happening to him was wrong? In Arizona? Yeah, in Arizona. He started her objection as to the foundation of the question. Overruled. What? Just make sure you speak loudly, please. I just, so can you repeat it? Yeah, at the time when something was happening, all these things are happening to your brother in Arizona. Did you understand um, that what was happening was wrong? Yes. Okay. Did it kind of, your understanding of what was happening as you got older, did that it evolve? It changed, yes. Okay. How did it change? It became more clear that... I'm sorry. Take your time. It kind of coalesced into like actual understanding of what was going on so I could identify a word to go with it. All right, what's that word? Abuse. Abuse. Now, we talked on cross examination a little bit about some of the things that your brother did do with the family. What's the time period total that you lived in Arizona? Uh, again, again, I don't can't call exactly, but I want to say like five years. Okay, so over five or six years, were there times that he got to do stuff with your family? Yes. Um, over that five or six years, were there also times where he was left home alone in his room? Yeah. Um, and times when you guys would be gone for all day. Yes. And he would be left home alone in his room. Yes. So those pictures that you looked at, um, that the defense showed you, those are all events that he went to in Arizona. Correct. Yes. Um, and some of them are as long as five or six years ago. Yes. And you talked about, you saw that picture of him doing homework in the house with you. Is that in the house in Arizona? Yes. Is that a common occurrence? Not all the time. Was it rare for that type of thing to happen? It would happen if someone had supervision, so I was there. As I think, I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't, it, I'll, just, I'll just say it wasn't often. So there are times, we're not saying, you're not saying that the stuff that <laughs> happened was when he was in the room was every single day, every minute of the day. No. There were times when he was outside and allowed to play. Yes. But most of the time, where was he? In his room or then outside. Now, I want to talk about uh, Florida specifically. You gave us a word for what you felt like happened in Arizona. Is that word how you feel about how he was treated in Florida as well? Jackson. Sustain, rephrase. 
the defense asked you about, you know, in Florida, did you, um, were you reading in your room a lot? Yes. Okay. Do you still know what's going on in your house? Technically, yes. And you lived in the same house as your brother? Yes. Um, and during the time in Florida, did you see him a lot? No. And is that because he's out of house at school or something else? Um, either at school or outside in the yard. And then where's the only other place he was? Room. Now, you mentioned about how he was treated in Arizona. Was he treated the same way in Florida? Objection. Overruled as to that. Um, starting work, yes. He was outside and in his room a lot more fun. You talked about how when you observed your parents deal with him, um, that there was anger. Is that how, when they interacted with him, is that what you observed the situation in Florida as well? Anger or frustration. Okay. Was there yelling at him? Yes. That's all the questions I have. All right. Um, Ma'am, that concludes your testimony. You may step down. Thank you. All right, Ms. Coakley, do you have your next witness ready? Sure, can we just have a, um, a five-minute break and then, yeah. All right, we'll take a five-minute, we'll make it a 10-minute recess, and then we'll start back up with the next witness. All right, court's in recess. All right, everyone may be seated. Before, before you do, let me just wrap up the last witness. So, Judge, uh, the there were two items of evidence that are, that we introduced, four and seven. Um, I have to redact the, the back of them. Right. Once I do that, I will at, that, at some point ask to publish that to the jury, but I can't right now because of the redactions that's, that's necessary. Okay. And I guess I should clarify it for the record. You did not move in seven through 14 during the examination. I assume you wanted to move them in to preserve the record on my ruling on the sidebar conference, correct? Am I correct? So, so f four and seven I moved in to evidence on the record. Right. The other ones were for identification purposes to refresh a recollection based on the court's ruling. Right. So I just, I we have marked them, so they are part of the record is my understanding. Okay, all right, good enough. The clerk has those. Okay, all right, so the clerk should have, what we were dealing with was a, a four through 14 now. Uh, four and seven came in evidence. The rest were for ID purposes. That's right. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Coakley? Uh, I will withdraw the state's motion for RF to testify in camera. After discussion with um, his attorney and RF this morning, uh, we're going to have him testify in court. And in light of the technical difficulty. Okay. So uh, what that means is that um, for purposes of the um, – media coverage, the media can still cover the trial. They cannot show the likeness of the um, minor witness during his testimony. Um, I thought you were going to raise another issue. Because of the lateness of the morning, uh, you had mentioned wanting to finish up the witness entirely. I don't, because we've gone to about 1145 um, with the first witness, I don't see us finishing uh, the next witness by um, by 1230. And, I write about that, or do you think you, you'd be able no, to finish? So here's the question. We can go to 1230 um, with your direct and then break for lunch with uh, cross-examination, or I can break now for lunch, and we start back at 1 o'clock. Uh, that way the direct and cross will occur continuously. That's what I was Mr. Waheed, are you fine with that? Uh, my, my only suggestion would be, because I know where we are on the, on the runway, is that, uh, and it's an hour, it's an hour either way, but I, I'm guessing there might be a need for another break then between direct and cross. So I was trying to avoid that. Why? What? Wh oh, I'm sorry. I missed that part. That the court ruled on that. What okay. was that, Ms. Rod? He didn't know. He didn't hear Ms. Coakley when she said he was going to testify live. Yeah, so yeah. So. Not using for a break. All right. That so that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the jurors back out. We'll break for lunch and, and um, we'll start back at. Um, is. Ms. Coakley, an hour and 15 minutes enough for the state? For yeah. yeah, how about for um, you, Ms. Murad, for the defense? I mean, I could even go um, 
to an hour and start back at 1245. But that, my suspicions are that most of you would like the extra 15 minutes, right? That's what I thought. All right, so let's go ahead and bring them out. I'm gonna, uh, we're going to break for lunch, and we'll start back up at 1 o'clock. All rise. Jury entering. All right, everyone may be seated. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, a couple things have happened while you were in uh, the jury room. We're going, what we're going to do is in, the next witness will be testifying live in front of you in this courtroom. So it won't be in um, you know, a video feed. Uh, we want to start that witness and finish the witness. And so rather than have a, a break with lunch, we're going to go ahead and break now for lunch. I'm going to give you an hour and 15 minutes. We'll start back um, at 1 o'clock sharp. So you'll go to lunch now and be back. Um, five minutes is enough staging time, right? Uh, five minutes to one. Just meet at the elevators with Mark. He'll bring you back into the uh, jury room, and uh, we should be able to start very sharply at 1 o'clock with the next witness. Um, obviously, remember, during the break, don't discuss the case with each other or with anyone else, do any kind of research or anything like that, and uh, do everything you can to avoid any inadvertent media coverage. Other than that, relax and have a good lunch. And I'll see you back in about an hour. All right, everyone may be seated. Um, anything the court needs to address before we break for lunch? Ms. Murad or Ms. Waid, Ms. Coakley? Um, I'm suspecting we are a little bit behind schedule. Is that a fair suspicion on my part? Okay, so we're going to need to talk about um, a plan B then in terms of not finishing on Friday. I mean, I can start to see the potential writing on the wall. So start to think about what will be the plan B in terms of next week, if we have to go into next week. Um, I know the hope is still to finish all the evidence on Friday, but if that happens, then we likely will be deliberating um, next week. And as I've said, next week with Monday's a holiday means we wouldn't start until Tuesday. So just plant that seed in your minds and think about what to do with that if, um, if by chance we don't get back on schedule, because I'm going to need to let these folks know at some point Maybe not today, but tomorrow I'll need to let them know that we're a little behind if, if we remain behind schedule. Sometimes we catch back up, so there's still some hope for that. Anything else? No, Your Honor, but I don't think we're going to catch back up. I have the length of the video. And you know what? I think you're probably absolutely right. That's why I'm raising the issue now, um, so we'll deal with it as we move forward. Okay. All right. Court will be in recess. seated. Okay, so we need to check the video on this. The video needs to exclude the witness box for this. Do we have IT here? IT is not in here. Let me see what comes up.
All right. We're back in session on State versus Ferreter. All sides ready to proceed? Okay. All right, give me just a moment. And my bailiff's already made the notice to everyone about the um, emergency warning we're supposed to get between 2 and 2.50, did you say? Can we, yeah. I, can we have a co I can't turn off my phone yet. I understand. There may be some phones that, um, that will hear the sound, mine included, because I have to keep mine for messages from my judicial assistant. Right. So um, I'm not going to require that you turn it off. So, but when they go off, don't anybody panic uh, because it's just a, um, yeah. All right, so as soon as your witness is available, Ms. Coakley, you'll let me know. And Ms. Uh, Murad, Mr. Waheed, you uh, folks are ready to proceed as well? Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, let's get the jury out here. We have the witness ready. You can go ahead and bring the jurors out. All right, and the next witness, I'll need that again, but that's... So that's... It's, it's, next witness. Is it a Zoom... Um, testimony? No, but I, we're going to publish some. Things. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you can use that at your leisure, yeah, whatever you need. We might need to like reconfigure. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Jury entering. All rise. All right, everyone may be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, welcome back. Uh, we are still obviously in the state's portion of the case. I'll be calling their next witness in just a moment. Um, I don't know if my bailiff has let you know, but there is some emergency warning that's supposed to hit all phones between 2 and 2.50. Um, if you have your phones on vibrate or off, um, if they're on vibrate, it may go off, um, so don't be alarmed if that happens. Um, for those persons uh, that are viewing these proceedings on Zoom, this proceeding um, immediately beginning in just a few moments will be um, covered by audio and only a video portion of the the attorneys in the gallery. Uh, the witness will not be shown on live camera uh, per agreement of the parties in this proceeding. So with that, is the um, state ready to call its next witness? Yeah, the state call All right. All right, Ms. Coakley, you may begin at your convenience. Can you please tell the jury your name? Uh, my name is... Is there... What's your middle name? It, do you sometimes go by... Yes. Among your friends and your family? Yes. Okay. How old are you? 16. What's your date of birth? 2007 by the Vietnamese government. Um, is that where you're originally from? Yes. Um, when did, how, approximately how old were you when you came to the United States? One and a half years old. I came here in February of 2009. Um, and why, how did you end up coming here? I was adopted by Tracy and Tim Ferreter. Okay. 
and you came, and then that's when you came for the first time into the United States? Yes. Now, today, what grade are you in? Uh, tenth. What, uh, in school, what kind of classes are your favorite right now? Math and science. Okay. What kind of math classes are you taking? AP Calculus. Okay. What about science? Uh, AP, math, AP uh, Chemistry for the final, final arts. Okay. And so you have that big AP test at the end of the year? Yes. Um, do you know uh, what, you're, what we're here to talk about? Yes. Okay. Is this something, how do you feel about having to come in here and talk about this? Uh, apathetic. Okay. Do you feel nervous at all? Uh, not really. Is this something you like to talk about? No. Uh, do you feel relieved about talking about it? As I said, I don't have any feelings about it. So um, you kind of told us that you came to the United States um, when you were adopted. I want to talk about how your who was in your family when you were younger. Okay, did you have you said Tim and Tracy Ferreter were your parents? Yes. Uh, did you have any siblings when you were younger? Yes. Tell us who your siblings were. My siblings were. Okay. How? Um, where do you fall in the age range of your siblings? Second oldest. Okay. Who's older than you? Um, and then was next. Yes. And then the, the youngest child? Yes. So how uh, far apart are you and... Uh, is... Uh, two years older than me, is one year younger than me, and is ten years younger than me. Okay, so how old were you when he was born? Eleven or twelve. Okay. Um, does it sound... What, when was he born? February? He was born in February of... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, around the 2017-ish? Is that right? Or am I wrong? Let me see. What grade were you in? I was in fifth grade. Okay, you were in fifth grade, so you were in elementary school about the time that he was born. Yes. Okay. So 10, 11, between, around that age? Yes. Now, in school, um, were you close in grade to any of your siblings? Uh, my sister was two grades above me. Which Fiona, sister is that? Two, one grade below me and not applicable because he's not in school yet. Okay. Now I want to talk about what your family life was like when you lived in Florida. How many times did your family live in Florida? Um, twice. Twice. When was the first time? Uh, when I was first adopted until... Uh, we moved to Arizona. Okay. How old were you approximately when you moved to Arizona? Uh, I just finished third grade. Okay. So you're in Arizona. Um, you're in Florida until the third grade. Yes. And then in the third grade is when you first were in Arizona. Yes. How long did you stay, uh, stay in Arizona for? I stayed in Arizona for about four years okay. until, until halfway th through eighth grade. So Arizona is third grade through halfway through the eighth grade year. Yes. Okay. Um, and so the first time you were in Florida, you were real young, like small elementary school age. Repeat the question. Is it fair to say that the first time you were in Florida, you were very young? It was young elementary school age. Yes. Um, and then Arizona was elementary school and the very beginning of middle school. I was there until my middle year of eighth grade. Until the middle of eighth grade. And then you moved back to Florida. Yes. Um, and so when you moved to Florida the second time, you were in the middle of eighth grade. How old were you? It was about 14 Eight. years old, seem right? Yes. Now, um, when you moved back to Florida, what time of year was that? Uh, somewhere in December. Okay. Uh, so somewhere in December of the middle of your eighth grade year. When I moved to Florida. When you moved to Florida the second time. Yes. Um, and where in Florida, like which town did you move to? I moved to Jupiter. And is that where your family's house was in Jupiter? Yes. And so your, did your whole family move with you? Yes. And what school did you start at? I started at Independence Middle School. Is that a school in Jupiter? It's a school in, yeah, it's a school in Jupiter. Was it close to your house? Yes. Now, I want to talk um, about kind of how your family, how your family was run with Tim and Tracy, the defendants. Um, how 
who was the person in your family who was in charge of setting the rules? Tim. Okay. Who was the person in your family that was in charge of deciding kind of what kind of punishment you would get? Tim. Um, and who was the one that kind of decided how you would be treated, the person in charge? Uh, Tim. Now, did Tracy also go along with and support what Tim did? Yes. Was it an option um, for you if you disagreed with a rule or if you wanted um, to discuss the way you were being treated? Was that something that you could have a discussion with, with the defendant, Tim? No. Now, talk to me about when you moved to Florida. What was the house like? The house, when I moved, when I moved back to Florida in 2021? Yes, December 2021? Yes. Yeah, how, how was the house like? So... The house had a two-car garage. It had three bedrooms, one office, and two bathrooms. And uh, we also had two living rooms and a uh, backyard. Okay. Who? Tell us who had the bedrooms. Who had what bedroom? I had a bedroom, I had a bedroom, and had the office as a room, and Tim and Tracy had a room together. Okay. I want to talk to you for a second about something that's already been in, entered into evidence um, and see if you recognize or we can talk about some of these photographs, okay? Okay. Um, permission to approach, Your Honor, what's already been entered into evidence as states 3A through C. Randy. Yes. Uh, which room is that? It is his room. Okay. Now, in these pictures, there's like some mattresses on the floor in his room. Is that what it was like when you were living there? No. Uh, were those mattresses on, on there? No. In the floor? Do you know where those mattresses were? That mattress was uh, in either, if it's an inflatable mattress, it was in storage or in my room. If it was an actual mattress, it would it would be it would be it would come from my room. Now, you mentioned that there was. Thank you. You mentioned that there was that I had a room. Yes. I had a room. Your parents had a room, and had the office. Yes. Where did you sleep? I slept in an eight by eight room, in the garage. Okay. Uh, was that room built into the garage it was built inside the garage inside the garage yes who built that or who uh, had it built uh timothy hired a contractor to build it in december of 2021 right and how do you know that because uh i was kept in their closet and i overheard the conversation of them having to build it okay now i'm going to approach something that has been entered into evidence already as states nine okay you may approach and you can approach freely. I'm showing you what's already been entered into evidence of States 9. What does that show? Uh, this shows the room. So and is this a picture of the garage kind yeah. of from the outside? Yes. And then in there, can you see the back wall of the room? Yes. Is that the room that you're talking about that you stayed in in the defendant's home in Jupiter? Yes. I want to talk about what it was like in that room. Um, you said it was about eight by eight. Yes. Uh, did it have a concrete floor or how, what was the floor like? So the floor was concrete, but I used um, these, these, um, these uh, little 16 by 16 inch um, mats of carpet to put down on the floor. So it wasn't so hard. Okay, um, so it had a concrete floor, but on top you lay there was a carpet laid on top of it. Yes. Um, did what kind of furniture did you have in that room? I had a, a desk and a bed. Did the bed have a bed frame, or yeah. what was it like? The, be the bed had no frame, had no box spring. Uh, it, j it was just a, uh, a mattress on the floor. Okay. And mattress on the floor. What size of mattress was it? Size of the mattress was a twin size. Now, did the room have any windows or any outside light? 
No, it only had an air conditioner. Okay. Let's talk about that air conditioner for a second. Were you um, allowed to touch or operate the air conditioner? No. Um, were you allowed to turn it on if you were hot or turn it off if you were too cold? No. Would you get in trouble if you um, touched the air conditioner at all? Yes. And who did that direction come from? Tim. Did the room have any lights? It had a light, but it was controlled outside the room. Okay, so if you wanted to turn on the light, um, is that something that you could do when you were inside the room? No. Um, did you have any control over when the lights were on or when the lights were off? Who controlled that? Uh, my parents, Tim or Tracy. Okay. Were there times that you were in the room in the dark? Yes. Uh, is that at night sometimes? Yes, and also during the day. Okay, so there are periods of time during the day where you would be there in the dark, in the room. Yes. What was it like in the room when the lights were off? Um, it was pitch black. You couldn't see anything. Would you have to feel your way around to yes. see what's going on? Now, did the room have um, a, a bathroom or access to the bathroom? It had a bucket for my um, urine and feces, but that was basically it. Okay. So if you, if you were in the room and you were closed in there and you had to use the bathroom, what was your only option? Use the bucket. Now, I want to talk about the time frame in Florida. While you were in there, were there times where you were locked in the room, unable to leave, um, and had to use the bathroom? Yes. Um, and did you use the bucket in the corner of the room in order to relieve yourself? Yes. Now, in Florida, did you ever have to use that bucket um, for feces? No. Um, but did you have to use it to urinate? Yes. What about um, pri previously? We'll talk about it a little bit more depth. When you were in Arizona, did you ever have to use the bucket for Arizona for feces? Yes. Uh, did you have to use it for urine? Yes. Because um, you ur had to urinate in the room on occasion, how, how was the, did the room smell at all? Yes. What, how did it smell? Uh, I mean, did it, was it bad? Putrid, yeah. Now, I want to talk um, about whether or not, was there a camera in the room? Yes. Um, and what was your understanding of what was happening with the camera? So the camera was a ring camera. It had two-way communication, but the communication from the person viewing the camera to the person that is being supervised by the camera was uh, separated by the click of a button on the on the phone or any device you can t to watch the video. So the person outside the room watching on the ring camera could talk to you inside the room? Yes, by the click of a button. So they would have to click on something in order to hear them. And you could they could also potentially hear what you would say. Yes. Were there times that um, the, the defendants in this case, Tim and Tracy Ferreter, is there, were there times that they spoke to you only through the camera? Yes. Now, we talked a little bit um, about the room, but tell me about the door. Um, how was the room, was, could you come and go from that room as you pl pleased? No. Tell me how it was. So, the door, the door in Florida? In Florida. All right, the door in Florida of, of December of 2021. To January of January. 2022, yes. Yes, uh, I had uh, a normal lock on the handle and a deadbolt also. Okay, which side of the door was the normal lock on the handle? The, the outside of the room. Okay, and what about the deadbolt? What? Also out, outside the room. So when you were inside the room, were you able to open the door if it was locked? No. Okay. Did that happen? Were you locked inside of the room? Yes. Um, was that most of the time you were in the room it was locked? Yes. Now, when you were in the room, did you always, um, were you always given access to water when you were locked inside the room? I received water occasionally, but not at, at a regular basis. Okay. So there are times when you're given a cup or a water bottle to have in the room. Yes. Um, but there are also occasions when you're locked inside the room without anything to drink. Yes. Okay. 
And what about food? Um, were, did you ever eat any of your meals in the room? I ate a majority of my, my meals in the room. If you were in the room and you didn't have any food at that time and you were hungry, did you have the ability to get additional food? No. Is that something you were allowed to do to go in the kitchen and get a snack or get additional food if you were hungry? No. If you did that, what would happen? Uh, I would get... Uh, I would did you get, get punished? Food. Yes. Ronan, did you like being in that room? No. Um, did you want to be in the room? No. Uh, did, how did it make you feel? To me, being locked in a room, it's dehumanizing. It's almost as bad as genocide. It's saddening to abuse a child that was just acting like a child, never doing, never thinking of what an adult would think to, a, to do to a child that would succumb his or her efforts in daily life to succeed, suffering from emotional pain, suffering, trauma. So were you, um, did you have a choice about whether or not to go in that room? Like did they, were you forced? Yes. by Tim and Tracy Ferreter to go into the room. Yes. If you resisted or, you know, didn't follow their directions, what would happen? I would be put in the room by physical force. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, so the period that we're really talking about here is about a five or six week period in December 2021 to January, uh, the end of January 2022, right? So I want to talk about what the majority of your life was like in that room in Florida. And just so we're clear, when you moved from Arizona, was the room there and ready for you? Yes. So you never stayed anywhere no. else in the house? No, the room was not ready for me in Arizona, but it was ready for me in Florida. In Florida. I'm so sorry. When you came from Florida, when you came from Arizona to Florida, the room had already been finished being con specially constructed for you? Yes. Okay. Now, I want to talk about kind of what your typical school day was like during that time period. All right. Typically, just on average, what time of the day would you be woken up? I'd be woken up around 6.30 to 7 o'clock. And how would you be woken up? Like, how would, you, how would it be wake-up time? Did you have an alarm clock? Would you naturally uh, wake up? How would that happen? Uh, Tim and Tracy would unlock my door. Okay, so someone would come in? Yes. Would your lights have been off and you be in the dark? Yes. Before that? At that point, would you be given the opportunity to go to the bathroom? Yes. Um, if you had you had to use the bucket at that point, the, or sometime during the previous night, what would happen? I would dump it uh, into the bushes be, be, um, in, uh, behind the house. Now, you said that you would wake up sometime between six, they would wake you up on average between six and seven in the morning. Yes. Um, you would get to go to the bathroom. What would happen when you were done going to the bathroom? I would be put back in my room or doing household chores around the house. When you were put back into the room, would it, you be locked in? Yes. And um, at this point, would you get dressed for school? Yes. Uh, where were your clothes kept? Outside the room. Okay. And so when we say outside the room, like in the garage? Yes. Would you get breakfast? Uh, occasionally, yes. Okay. So were there times, some of those days, that you, they didn't give you breakfast? Yes. But were there also lots of days where they did, in fact, give you breakfast? It wasn't a lot. It was probably 50-50. Okay. When you would get breakfast, would that be out in the kitchen with the rest of the family, or where would it be? It would be either outside or in my room. Okay. And when you say outside, you mean outside the house? Yes. When it was in the room, what typically would you get for breakfast? Uh, peanut butter and bread and a fruit or something. Okay. A fruit like something like a banana? Yes. And so when you say peanut butter and bread, do you mean just like peanut butter on a, two slices of bread? Yes. Um, and those would be, it would be brought into your room? Yes. And you would have it in the room? Yes. Would that be the breakfast almost every day? Or would there be variation? Uh, I'll be the same breakfast every single day. Now, what would you, while you're eating breakfast in the room, 
would you have to have anything to do in the room or what would be happening while you're before you go to school? Uh, I had a sleeve of books but and textbooks, but that's all I had. Okay. Would there sometimes you do homework in the morning? Yes. What time approximately, um, so would you be in the room from the time you got let out at 6 and 7 in the morning until it was time to leave for school? Yes. What time approximately do you leave for school? 9 o'clock. Um, and then you get to school? Yes. And school's pretty close, right? Yes. Um, and so you did, in fact, attend uh, Independence Middle School while you were here in Jupiter, Florida. Yes. Now, um, at school, would you get lunch? No, nah, I brought I brought lunch. Who made that lunch? Tracy. And what would be in that lunch? A peanut butter, a plain peanut butter sandwich. Either some sort of chips and a fruit. Um, would you be allowed to, if you wanted to, to buy extra snacks at school? No. Um, were you allowed to have any more snacks than what was given to you in your lunch? No. Were you allowed to buy a, a school lunch? No. Did you uh, want snacks? Yes. Uh, did the other kids at school have snacks? Yes. Is that something that was kind of hard for you, that to see other kids getting snacks and not being able to have them? Yes. Now, what time approximately would school be over? Uh, 3 o'clock. And what time would you get home from school? Around 3.30. And then when you would get home from school on most days, what would happen? I'd be put back into my room. Okay. And when you say put back into the room, are you locked in the room? Yes. And would you have been allowed to leave the room during that time? Uh, we, we, uh, would you be allowed, or did I confuse you? Yeah. Yeah. Would you, did you have the choice if you wanted to say sit in the living room uh, and watch TV after school? Is that something that you could do? No. Um, could you be in the house? In the main uh, house? No. Now, so you get back around 3.30, um, and then how long do you stay in the room in the afternoon? Um, on most days uh, until 7 o'clock or at dinner time. Okay. Would you eat dinner in the room or with the family? In the room. And um, are there some times on occasion that you would be allowed to eat dinner with the family? Yes. Most of the time, though, where were you eating dinner? In my room. And when you're eating dinner in the room, are you locked in the room? Yes. Are you, uh, did they ever let you out before bed to go to the bathroom? Yes. Okay. Would that be kind of right before you went to bed? Yes. Sustain, rephrase. Okay. When, when would you usually be let out to go to the bathroom? at the end of the day? Uh, like when Tim and Tracy go to bed, which is around 9, 10 o'clock. And after you're let out to go to the bathroom at night, did you get what happened next? I was locked into my room. And then throughout the night, are you locked in the room? Yes. Now, when the defendants would go to bed, um, what happened with the lights? The lights were off or on. Now, in the room, I want to talk about where there, um, we talked about what furniture you had. At some points during this time frame, did you have other things in the room? Well, uh, I had my, I had my small selection of toys and just books. Okay, so books toy, and toys, some yes. toys. Um, at some point, did some of those items get taken out of the room? Yes. And then um, <clears throat> you said that you had books and toys. Was there a point where you only had books? Yes. Um, did those books eventually, some of them get taken away? Yes. And how many, what kind, how many books were you kind of left at with? Like two or three textbooks. Okay. Um, were you allowed to have electronics in the room? No. Uh, oh, go ahead. Raise that. The only electronic allowed in my room was my school computer. Were you allowed to have it in with you all, at all times? No. Um, just when you were doing schoolwork? Yes. When you had your school computer, were you allowed to play computer games on it at all ever? No. Is that something that a lot of middle school kids do? Yes. Uh, is that something that kids would talk about doing at school? Yes. 
did you want to play games on your computer? Yes. Now, we talked uh, a little bit about the lights being off at night. Were there times where the lights were off during the day? Yes. Um, and approximately when that would happen, how long were you, how long would that go on for? Um, like, would it be for five minutes or would it be for longer than that? It would be around for a couple hours. Now, I want to talk um, about uh, other, other times in, the, uh, in Florida. Were there times in Florida uh, where you were, in fact, outside of the house? Uh, yes. Um, or inside the house itself? Uh, yeah, there were times where I was inside the house. Uh, there were some occasions where you were allowed to be in the living room. Yes. Is that what you mean? Or in the kitchen with the rest of the family? Um, usually I was just in the living room doing chores or in the, or, or in the kitchen also doing chores. Now, was there time in Florida where you were outside of the house? Yes. Uh, what would you be doing outside of the house, mostly? Raking, leaves, moving shells. Uh, yeah. Now, when you are outside of the house, are you under the direct supervision of your parents, or are you kind of out there by yourself? Uh, uh, they had a camera to watch me, but they, it was another ring camera. But other, otherwise, I was not supervised while, while I was outside. So you'd be outside of the house by yourself for periods of time? Yes. Now, are there, were there a couple occasions where maybe you, were, you did get to play or, uh, you know, interact with your siblings outside? Yeah. But for the most part, when you were outside, what were you having to do? Um, yard work, chores. And could you, um, when you were doing the yard work of the chores, if you got hot or you needed a drink of water, were you allowed to just go in the house and get those things? No. Um, were there times where the front door was locked and you couldn't get in? Yes. What would you have to do in that circumstance? Um, would you just have to wait outside or yes, something I else? Wait outside. Okay, until they decide to let you in? Yes. Now, I want to talk about um, in Florida, were there instances where the defendant in this case, Tim Ferreter, Acted with you, acted towards you in a way that was physically aggressive. Repeat the question. Was there any ever any physical aggression towards you in Florida? Um, there was instances of uh, grabbing and pushing, but otherwise, no okay. physical contact such as punching, hitting, smacking. Right. That none of that happened during the time frame in Florida. No. Um, were there times where uh, he was verbally aggressive to you in Florida? Yes. What kind of things would he say to you? He would say, this is a piece of um, S-H-I-T. You better, uh, yeah, you better pick it up. Yeah. Uh, would he uh, call you names? No. Would he yell at you? Yes. Uh, and would he scream at you? Yes. Did it appear to you, based on how he was interacting with you, that he was, there was, he was angry at you? Yes. Um, and is the same true for Tracy? Uh, no. Now, um, because of his verbal aggression, did you have a belief as to whether or not he could, uh, if you didn't listen to him, or if that there was a risk, or that he, did you, were you concerned that he would be physically aggressive to you? I could safely assume that he would be, he could cause bodily harm to me. Overall. And is that based on your, some of your prior experiences in Arizona? Yes. Overall. Now, I want to talk uh, about Arizona now, okay? That's where you lived immediately prior to coming uh, to Florida? Our, we talked, we ended up talking about Florida, about times where you were out, outside and couldn't come in the house. Did that happen in Arizona as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, were you locked outside? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, I had to move rocks and stones and uh, shrubs and cactus around the, around the 
lawn, but I and I was unable to go inside to eat or get water. Now, in Arizona, initially, uh, when you you said you, I think we said that you moved there in early elementary school. Yes. You said I think around third grade. Initially there, did you have a room inside the house? Yes. Okay. Tell me how the rooms were initially when you moved to Arizona. So, do you want to describe the room? Yeah. All right. The room had a desk. It had a dresser. It even once had a um, coffee table for me to play chess. And it had a bed with a mattress, box, box spring, bed frame. Yeah. And Is that your room inside the house? Yes. Um, and during that time frame is born at that point? No. When, uh, at some point in Arizona, did you, did they build a different room-like structure for you in the garage? Yes. Um, and the defendant's the one that had that built? Yes. When approximately did you end up having to go into the garage room? About a week before it was born. Okay. And you said that's about when you were in the fifth grade? Yes. Okay, so around 11 years old. And there, um, prior, though, when you were in the room in the house, were you able, was that room, the room in the house, ever locked? Yes. Was it locked from the outside? Uh, So in the room, when you were in the room in the house, were there times when you couldn't leave or go into the room when you wanted? In the house in Arizona? Yes. Uh, Did that room have access to a bathroom? Now, I want to talk about the room in the garage in Arizona. Was that room similar to the room that you lived in in Jupiter, Florida? Yes. Tell me about that room. So it had a bed frame, a box spring, and a mattress. Uh, It had a desk. Did it have any windows? No, no windows. Just uh, There was a wall-mounted AC conditioner. And... um, it had also, it also had a dresser, which was removed from the room at later stages. Uh, were you allowed to touch or utilize the air conditioner? No. In Arizona, uh, did it sometimes get hot? Yes. And did that room have a bathroom? No. Uh, did it have the bucket that you already told us about? Yes. How did that room smell? Bad. In Arizona, you kind of gave us your average day here in Florida. Was it similar to the amount of time that you were in the room in Arizona? Yes. Uh, Were there times in Arizona that you were in the room for longer periods of time? Yes. About how long would you say is the longest? Uh, About 18 hours. And were there times where you um, didn't get meals in that room in Arizona? Yes. Um. Would it that happen for like the whole day, or would just a meal or two, or explain to us how it was? Re, re, no, reset. How, when you wouldn't get meals, how would that happen? How what would that be like? Would it be every meal, or ex, give us some context? Be, I had a fluctuating frequency. Um, it, I sometimes I got all three meals. Sometimes I only got one. Sometimes I only got two. Yeah. Now, uh, were there times that the family went to events or out of the house and you were alone locked in the room? Yes. Did that happen in Florida too? Um, yes. Now, in Arizona, we talked about the fact that there was some physical aggression in Florida, but there wasn't physical punishment. In Arizona, was there physical aggression from Tim Ferrita towards you? Yes. Uh, tell me about that. Uh, one time, I got smacked in the face. Okay. Do you ever grab you by the neck or push you against the wall, anything like that? Yeah, he did that. Sustain, rephrase. Tell me about some other instances besides getting smacked in the face. Um, he would grab me by the neck. He would, uh, grab my arm. He would, uh. Was there ever instances of physical punishment in Arizona? Uh, yes. Okay, tell me about that. So, he had a, um, Tim had a jump rope he used uh, used to me for, um, punishment and also a belt. 
Okay. And when you say a jump rope or a belt, what would he do with those? Uh, spank me with them. Okay. Hit you with them? Yes. Um, where in the house would you be when that happened? In my room. Okay. Who else would be in there? No one else. So just you and the defendant? Yes. Would um, there, the defendant be saying anything to you? Would there be yelling or anything like that? There will be a lot of yelling, yes. Um, and did it seem like he was angry at you during these? Yes. Now, during the course of your childhood, um, your time in the time we were talking about in Arizona and also in Florida, did you ever see any of your sisters get punished? Um, no. Would they be punished or treated in the same way that you were for the same type of conduct? No. Um, what was the difference? They got their phones taken away for like a day or two. And what would happen to you? I would get locked in my room. Uh, yeah. Okay. Your Honor, if I can just have a second? You may. Florida. When you are in that structure that they built in the garage, are you physically able to leave or escape? Like without, you know, just normally, are you able to escape? Sustain, rephrase, counsel. Were you able to open the door from the inside? Overruled. You can answer the question, that means. I, um totally forgot the question. Yeah, it's okay. Were you able uh, to open the door from the inside when it was locked? If I had a key, no, but I didn't know. But did you have a key? No. Uh, did you have any way to get out of the room once they locked you inside? I devised a couple of plans, but I didn't. Right. Could, did, was, were any of those plans have worked? Uh, it was one time where I stuck a Lego piece in the pin for the door, but, that got, but I kind of realized that that wasn't deep enough. So there wasn't a way immediately available. Was there a way immediately available for you to be able to leave that room? No. Okay. That's all the questions I have. All right, Cross. Okay. You're going to do the cross, Ms. Murad? Yes, sir. All right, you may begin at your convenience. So we're going to, um, I want to talk a little bit about what the state has said. I know you've been sitting there for a long time, so if you need a break, let me know, okay? All right. Okay. So do you think it's fair to say that um, you talked a lot about your time at Tim and Tracy's house on direct examination, right? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. And, nope, that's okay. Um, since we're recording, you do have to answer out loud, okay? Okay. So if I ever say if that's a yes, I just mean I want, I want, I want to get it on the record, all right? All right. Okay. Um, do you think it's fair to say that it's hard to think of the good memories because everyone around you now has a bad image of Tim and Tracy? Objection. Improper. Overruled. You can answer. Uh, we, we say that question again? Sure. Do you think it's hard to think of good memories when everyone around you has a bad image of Tim and Tracy in their mind? Uh, I can easily recall recall the good times, but uh, but not. I don't have a bad image of Tim and Tracy. They just made a mistake. They they uh, they were just acting out of um, frantic surprise of my of my actions. They were they they weren't. I believe that they weren't trying to do any harm. Yeah. I believe that I, I believe that people should recognize that that was a mistake and forgive them and move on from move on. I appreciate that, Ronan. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the 
family schedules that you all had in your house, okay? All right. So you have three brothers and sisters, right? Yes, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, right? Yes. Yeah? Yes. And yes. this is a little baby. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, right now he's probably about two or three years old? I think he's, he's either four or five. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I, I probably have, have the dates wrong. So obviously um, when he was a baby, Tracy took care of him a lot, right? Yes. And Tracy was the one who normally stayed home. Yes. And Tim worked a lot. Yes. Is it fair to say that Tim was, for the most part, Tim was the one that was working and Tracy was the one who was at home? Yes. And Tim also traveled abroad a lot for work? Yes. So you also have Ma, who is the sporty one, is that fair to say? Yes. So she has softball, right? Yes. I think she played soccer too? She played soccer in Florida and when, before we moved to Arizona. Oh, okay. But softball was her main thing? Yes. And she would um, have a lot of practices, right? Yes. You would go to some of those practices? Yes. And would go to band? Yes. And she also, I think, did concert band, right? Yes. So there was marching band and concert band? Yes. And Tracy would be responsible for driving her around to this stuff as well? Yes. You had your activities. I know you tried track, right? Yes. Um, I think in Florida you did chess for a little bit? Yes. So Tracy's kind of running around trying to keep everybody at their various activities. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. You did this with the state, but I want to establish a little bit of a clear timeline for the jury. So you were adopted in, I have the date in front of me, in 2009? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so you're adopted in 2009, and then your family lives in Florida when you're a baby, right? Uh, on a, to be honest, we didn't. Uh, I don't know what I don't know where I lived between seven between in my younger years because I can't remember because I'm I was a toddler. Fair enough. But uh, will you take my word for it that for a couple years you were sustained? Um, you remember living in Arizona after that, right? No, I, I remember living in Florida, then I moved to Arizona, then I moved back to Florida. That's okay. all. That's the all I remember. Okay. So you're in Arizona from about the – when you, you're about 11 or 12 all the way up to December of 2021. Is that right? Yes. I'm sorry, I think you were a little younger, but all the way up to December 2021, and then you moved to Florida, right? Yeah. And you ran away around end of January 2022? The most recent time? Yes. Okay. So the time frame we're talking about that you stayed in, in Florida most recently in Tim and Tracy's house was end of December 2021 to end of January 2022, right? Sorry, I'm distracted. Say that again. That's Okay. Um, when you all moved to Florida, the most recent time, it was about Christmas time, December 2021, all the way to end of January 2022 when you ran away, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and when you moved, I assume there was no school because it was Christmas time? Yes. And your family was moving boxes, trying to get everything packed up, right? Yes. Okay. And then after that, you pretty much started school after the Christmas holiday? Yes. I want to talk about the different rooms that you had. Um, we'll start with Arizona, okay? All right. So the first room you had, uh, not the first room, but what the state was talking about was a room inside the house in Arizona that ultimately had a lock placed on it. Is yeah. that right? Yes. And that room had a lock placed on it while Tracy was pregnant with Pierce. Yes. That room had a window. Yes. It had a desk. Yes. It had a dresser. Yes. It had a bed. Yes. And it had a closet. Yes. Um, and you said it also had a coffee table for you to play chess. Yeah. Which you're still really good at, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and that door was not always locked. No. There were times that you could move in and out for freely from that door. Yes. Okay. The next room is a week after this is born, about a week. I'm sorry, before. before. Yeah, we sorry, a week before Pips is born. 
Is that right? Yes. Okay. And that room was built in the garage. Yes. Now, you and the girls, by that I mean had previously, not this room, but used the garage to like watch movies and stuff, right? Yes. Um, but this garage room was built specifically for you. Yes. And it had a bed. Yes. It had a desk. Yes. And it had a dresser. Yes. Um, and you think it was about an 8x10 or 8x9 room as well. Yes. It also had stuff on the walls, right? Yes. I think you had like a periodic table on it. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a yes? Yes. And, but then sometimes you would get angry and rip that stuff off the walls, yes. right? Yes. Tim and Tracy never took that stuff off no. the walls. Um, and that room also was not always locked. <laughs> that, room that room was always locked. Okay, so it's your testimony that at no point could you sort of move freely in and out of that room in Arizona. I cannot. That door was always locked. Now I want to take you to the room in Florida, which uh, was built in December of 2021, okay? All right. That was an 8 by 8 room, right? Yes. Um, that room also had a bed, a desk, a dresser, right? No dresser. No dresser, I'm sorry, just a bed and a desk, right? Yes. And then the clothes you said would actually be kept outside the room. Yes. And part of that was because you would sometimes hide electronics in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you have, like, ripped up your clothes before, too? Um, I only done it once, and that was in Arizona, but I don't, I usually, I don't rip my clothes. Okay. But not, not on a regular basis. All right, but sometimes when you get angry, or at least one time, you did rip up all your clothes. Yeah. Um, and that bed, I, I know the state said you moved in December. In that Florida room, you were warm enough? Um, it's not that I was warm enough. It was, no, it was that I was too warm because, and that we had a fan. I, I, we put a fan in my room. I see. So you had like, I mean, you had sheets and a bed, right? Or, or like a sheets and a pillow. Yes. And a blanket. Yes. And then you also had the air conditioning unit installed there. Yes. Your Honor, can I approach? You may. You approach me. Oh, no. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the witness. I was wondering. I was like, why the background? I didn't see anybody moving toward me, so I assume you meant the witness. Ronan, I'm going to hand you, this is a little bit of a talk, but I have marked as Defense Exhibit 15 for identification purposes only, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm going to hand you this as an exhibit to the court for the Any objection? No, Your Honor. Court receives and accepts Defense Exhibit 15 in evidence without objection. May I publish it to the jury? Your you may. Carry the mic when you're walking away. I see that there's some posters on the wall there too, and I know when the police came, they weren't there. Um, when you got upset, did you rip up those posters too? Yes, ma'am. Tim and Tracy didn't remove them. Nope. Okay. And sometimes, I know the state talked about how you weren't allowed to have electronics in your room. Those electronics were removed, right? Yes. And is that because of things that you did with electronics? Uh. I didn't do, 
All I, um, I did nothing wrong with like. Well, yeah, I did. I did go into a lot bunch of schools things and do some not so legal stuff and uh, yeah. And I would yeah, I would factory set school laptops and tablets. Yeah, and so they would take away your electronics when you got in trouble with the school for kind of messing with their IT system, right? Yeah. And I know the state also talked to you about how you were only allowed that school laptop, right? Yes. But only to do homework, not to do games. Yes. Um, but you also jailbroke that laptop, right? Yes. Um, the first thing you said to this jury was that Tim and Tracy made a mistake based on trying to respond to your behavior even if they didn't handle it correctly. Is that fair to say? Yes. So I want to talk a little bit about that behavior, okay? Okay. All right. So would you agree with me that sometimes when you get angry, you throw things? Yes. You kick things? Yeah. And you punch things? Um, is it, do you remember giving a deposition in this case? Yeah, I approach. All right, so the question's withdrawn. Objection is moot. Um, and wh when you were at Tim and Tracy's house, you would have outbursts, right? Uh, yes, but it would not cause physical harm to myself or others. Okay, but it would include things like breaking glass? I've never bro broken... No, uh, well, I stepped on a... I stepped on uh, my one of my picture frames because I was in a dark room, just feeling my way around. But yeah. So are you saying you never broken glass at their house before? Or that was the only time you broke glass. Yes. Okay. Which one? That was the only time, or you've never broken glass? I, I have. Uh, the only time I've broken glass is when I stepped on the picture frame. Okay. And you'd agree that when you were at their house, you would rip things and throw things. Yes. And I think in your words, you intentionally broke the rules you knew about at least five times a week? Usually more, but yes. I want to start by talking about sort of um, before Ps was born, okay? So not your early young age, but from when you were about 10 years old, okay? Okay. Um, at that time, you were going to school, I think, at a, uh, Sunrise Elementary in Immaculate Heart. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. At that time, you were having those outbursts we talked about at home. Yes. And um, if something happened at school, like some conduct at school, obviously your teachers were talking to Tim and Tracy, right? Yes. So then Tim and Tracy would find out, and then they would react. Yes. And that would include a d discipline sometimes, yes. right? Yes. Um, at Sunrise Elementary School, do you remember punching a student? I know you were young. Objection, Your Honor. Also time right now. Sustained. Do you remember? Well, let me have you approach you, unless you want to withdraw the question, um, Ms. Moran. I believe the time frame is right. right. So Judge. approach. I
All right, so the objection's overruled. You may, um, do you still remember the question, sir? I punched a kid. You want to read? Yeah. yeah. When you were at Sunrise Elementary, you were about nine years old. Do you remember punching another student? Uh, do you have a name for that student? I don't. Uh, don't I punch I don't, I don't recall punching a student. That's okay. Um, you did have some behavioral issues at Immaculate Heart, too, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, I have, do you remember kicking a ball at another student repeatedly? Do you have a name for the student? I don't. Um, I think I do, yes. Okay. Do you remember putting your finger and thumb and pushing up a, on a boy's throat and pushing him up against the wall at Immaculate Heart? Yes. And there was some in instances of stealing at Immaculate Heart? So after Immaculate Heart, um, this is born in February of 2017, right? Yes. So for a little while in there, you're, at, you're still at Immaculate Heart, right? Yes. Okay. And there, there um, you ended up getting a technology breach at school, right? Uh, yes. Can you explain what happened? A technology? At Immaculate Heart? Can approach. All right, so the objection is um, overruled in part and sustained in part, and you may proceed in accordance with the court's ruling. Ms. Moran. Thank you. So when your parents found out about that technology breach that you had at Immaculate Heart, how did they respond? Um, yeah. Hold on a second. Honestly, I forgot. That's okay. Um, Ms. Is Moran, it fair can you hold on a sec, because sure. I need to focus on you and him. That's so okay. I can't do it. You may continue, Ms. Moran. Okay. 
And so because of that technology breach, you were restricted from technology at home too, right? Yes. So you weren't allowed to have like iPads and stuff in your room, so that stuff had to be removed. Yes. I want to talk about something else that happened at Immaculate Heart um, that your parents did find out about. Do you remember going into your sister's class? Yes. Okay. So on that day, um, I think if, tell me if I'm wrong, you had sort of, you were mad at me. Yes. And you had pretended that a teacher told you that it was okay to, um, you went into the classroom, right? Yes. And her teacher was Miss McCoy, if you remember? Yes. And you told Miss McCoy that you were allowed to make an announcement, right? Yes. And the announcement that you made was really derogatory towards your sister? Yes. And it made your sister cry? Yeah. Um, and your parents found out about that? Yeah. So your parents then, um, Tracy came with you and Tim came with you, right? Yes. And you, they both came to the school? Yes. And you both spoke with the teacher separately, you with Tim and with Tracy? Yes. I think they also, you brought a box cutter to school? Uh, yes, that was at Basis Charter Schools. Oh, that was at Basis? How did your parents respond to that? They locked me in my room. But a box cutter is a dangerous thing, right? It was, it was more like a, um, yeah, it was, yeah, it's a dangerous thing. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about Basis Academy. and how your parents responded to some of the stuff there, okay? All right. Okay. Um, at basis, you also attempted to hack into the school computers? I did, yes. And because of that, you had to get your technology removed again? Yes. Um, you also said something in class that was inappropriate? Yes. And it was um, asking if the Holocaust is a Sustained. good thing? Sustained. So after that inappropriate thing, your parents did find out about it, right? Yes. And they were mad? Yes. Because that's not something you should say, right? Yes. Um, at Basis Academy, you also stole chemistry books? Yeah. You stole a student's tablet? No. Did you steal a computer and a tablet? Maybe it didn't belong oh, to yeah. you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, and did that belong to another student? Yes. Were your parents mad when that happened too? Yes. Um, and did you get disciplined for that? Yes. Okay. So it looks like a couple times you're kind of doing things and you're just, regardless of what they're doing, you're not stopping. Is that fair to say? Yes. You did a search on that computer that you jailbroke at basis? I, jail I jailbroke a, a, what's it called again, a tablet, but not a, but not a computer. Okay, so you jailbroke the tablet, right? Yeah. And then you did a search on there? Yeah. And that search was concerning to your mom and dad? Yeah. I won't talk about what the search is, but is it fair to say that it was something that it was understandably concerning to them because it sounded a little violent? Do you remember playing with when you were in Arizona and his and getting facial injuries? Well, yeah. When your parents tell you to stop and not go so fast? Yeah. But you still did it? Yeah. And that hurt. Did you remember him getting a lot of injuries on his face? It's okay. It's like a just wait a second. All right, I think the emergency alert is over. You may continue, Ms. Moran. Well, sure not so quick. We're still having an emergency. <laughs> All right, I think it's safe now, Ms. Moran, to continue. You may. Go 
Go ahead. May I approach the window? Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah, already said yes. You must Sorry. not have heard me. Is that what um, face looked like after he fell off that bike? Uh, yes. Is that a fair and accurate indication of what his face looked like after he fell off the bike? Yes. Um, Your Honor, at this time, the defense would seek to move into evidence. Defense Exhibit 16, strike one mark, second. Any objection? No. Court receives and accepts uh, Defense Exhibit 16 in evidence without objection. Is it fair to say any time a baby gets hurt on their face, it's concerning? S sustained as to that question, the, the, uh, you can re rephrase it in a way that's proper, Ms. Maroon. How did your parents respond when this happened to you? Were they mad mm -hmm. at you? Yeah. And they did ask you not to push them so hard, right? Yeah. But you did it anyway? While you're in Arizona, do you remember your friend? Yes. And you went to his house, right? Yes. And you pretended to tutor her, or were you actually tutoring her? I, I actually tutored her. Yeah. Um, and you stole her dad's credit card? I stole, I stole the num I just memorized the numbers, that's it. And then you used his credit card? Yeah. Um, and when your dad found out about that, he did sort of like grab you and get mad at you because of what you did, right? Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about Florida. You were only there for six weeks. Yes. Do you remember offering to beer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and was that so you could conduct an experiment? Yes. How old was it at the time? It was four. Four? Yeah. Um, it's fair to say a four-year-old should not be drinking beer, that, it, that that could hurt them? Uh, that was the point of the experiment. I know. But that could hurt a four-year-old, yeah, right? Could. Could. And that's something that your parents found out about too? Yeah. And they got mad at you? Yeah. When you were at school in Florida, what school did you go to in Florida? Uh, when, after I came back from Arizona? Yes. Uh, I went to Independence Middle School. So when you were at Independence Middle School, you had an incident where you sorry, pretended to be um, you went into a classroom of a teacher, right? Yeah. A teacher that you don't know? Yeah. And that you pretended to be a member of the school board? Yeah. And you convinced that teacher that you were, in fact, a member of the school board? Yeah. And uh, you told her that you were grading her that day? I wouldn't say grading, but critiquing her. Cr evaluating her, evaluating, right? Evaluating, yeah. And that's something, I mean, it looks like you're pretty good at kind of pretending sometimes and telling stories. Sustain, rephrase. Is that some, uh, would you characterize yourself as someone who likes to pretend sometimes? Yes. And tell stories? Yes. And those stories can be really detailed? Yes. You like to add uh, d d details to those stories? Yes. Do you think sometimes you have an impulse to tell stories and kind of make something up for people to believe? Yes. Overruled. That's a yes? You can answer. I think you did answer. Yeah, yes. he did. Do you also have a method of picking sort of which adult is going to be easiest to influence for you? All right, you need to approach on that.
All right, the objection is sustained. You may continue, Ms. Moran. All right, Ronan, I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but you remember that your parents did take you to doctors, right? Therapists, doctors. Me a, couple, a couple of doctors, yes. Yeah, so you went to a few different people, right? Yes. Probably on a weekly basis? No. Do you remember giving a deposition in this case? It was like in a room, I was there, Ms. Coakley was there. Uh, the... Uh at, at SP? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And in that deposition, you said, it's not one of my top priorities um, in reference to seeing doctors in Arizona. It's not one of my top priorities. Page 126, the deposition. What's the legal basis of the objection, Ms. Coakley? So, so let me, I, I need to address the objection. Are you making it? No, You're fine. Okay. All right. You may proceed, Ms. Moran. Okay. So in that deposition, you said, it's not one of my top priorities to think about people that I meet like once a week. And that was in reference to seeing doctors in Arizona. Is that what you were asked? And is that what you said? All right, you can sustain it that you can show him the question and the answer and then ask him if that was his answer to the question. So I want you to read page 126. It does require a little context and then look up when you're done, okay? So does your answer yes stand? If it does, you need to proceed with the next question. Well, this is impeachment. He's only supposed to read the question and the answer and just state what I'm just saying so he understands. So, sir, the question is simply, you've been presented with the question that was asked on deposition, and you've been presented with your answer. The only question you need to answer at this point is whether that was your answer at the time of the deposition. So what... Now, let me get the answer to this question. Was that your answer at the time of the deposition, sir? Yes. All right, so you can approach now. All right, you may continue, Ms. Moran. Thanks, George. All right. Now, we went through a lot of different things that happened um, in your, like with your behavior at school and at home, right? Yep. And your parents would always respond to that. Is that a yes? Yes. But you still didn't stop, right? Yes. So with the computers, you kept hacking into school computers, right? Yes. Sometimes you would continue to have outbursts, right? Yes. You would still um, rip down the stuff in your wall, right? Yes. You said in Arizona that you were um, spanked by Tim, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And you were never hit randomly, correct? It was always yes. for a reason? Yes. Okay. So it was never just sort of him doing it to do it. It was always in response to sort of something that you did. Yes. 
and that didn't cause you any sort of permanent damage, disfigurement, anything like that. It was swelling that went away. Yes. I want to talk about, um, the state mentioned the stuff about snacks. I want to talk about kind of what your life was like in Florida as far as that's concerned. So you got three meals a day, right? Uh, occasionally, yes. In Florida? Yes, occasionally. So it's your testimony that in Florida you didn't get breakfast, lunch, and dinner? I occasionally got meals. Okay. So we're going to go back to that de de deposition again, okay? So let me go grab it for my colleague. Your mom packs your lunch every day? Ms. Murad, when you reach a good stopping off point, I want to take a 10 minute break for the jury. Because uh, right we've been going about an hour and a half, so I want to give them a 10 minute break. You can take a 10 minute break. All right, so let's do that now and then just hold your question. You can pick back up with it when we come back. All right, so court is going to take a recess. Now it's uh, about 2.31. Uh, we'll uh, break until 2.45. Am I supposed to stand up? All right. Coakley, can we get the witness back in here? Ms. Coakley, do you have witnesses, other witnesses scheduled for this afternoon? All right. Everyone ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You may go ahead and have the jurors brought back in. All rise. Very entering. All right, everyone may be seated. Ms. Murad, you may continue with your cross. Thank you, Your Honor. So I think, okay. Um, I asked you earlier and you said that you did not get three meals a day in Florida, right? Uh, I occasionally got it, but I somet sometimes I didn't. Okay. So I, uh, may I approach, Judge? Okay. I'm referring to page 142 of the deposition, lines 5 through 17. I'm going to hand you a portion of your deposition. I want you to take a look at it, okay? And when you are done... Uh, you were referring to it's about lines five through ten, uh, five through seventeen, I think. I'm sorry. Eleven through fourteen. Are you referring to um, Arizona or Florida? Florida. Florida. Uh, I got all three meals. Okay. Thank you. So in Florida, your mom made you breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Yes. And for lunch, she would pack you lunch. Yes. You would get a water bottle, like an empty water bottle that you could fill up at school. Um, I do recall having a water bottle at one point, but I think I lost it. Okay. Uh, but she intended to give you the water bottle before you lost it, right? Yeah. Okay. And you got a sandwich? Yes. Chips? Occasionally, yes. And a piece of fruit? Yes. Okay. Um, you also, uh, you mentioned that your mom got you bread with peanut butter and bananas for breakfast, right? Yes. Uh, at that time, you were vegetarian or vegan? Uh, pescatarian. Pescatarian, okay. Um, so you were getting like a pescatarian b b breakfast at the time? Yeah. Okay. We talked a little bit, or you talked in direct examination about sort of the snacks that you wanted, right? Yes. So do you recall going to a pediatrician? And the pediatrician not, you know, saying less sugar is way better for you? I'm sorry. Let, let her finish the question so I can then hear the objection. So st I lost the question in the middle of the objection. So restate the question and then uh, make your objection and I'll rule. Thank you. Do you recall a pediatrician telling you that, uh, or your mom, that uh, sugary snacks might be bad for you? Objection. I can hear All right. Sustained. 
it goes to effect on the listener. Term? You can rephrase it in a way that doesn't require hearsay. So okay. I'm sustaining so the objection. Is it fair to say that in general, Tracy and Tim wouldn't allow treats and sugary snacks like that for any of the kids for the most part, right? The girls got snacks like that, sugary snacks like that, but I didn't. Okay, and they got it as treats, right? They had, the, they had that as easy access. They could access it whenever they wanted. It wasn't necessarily an incentive to get that, but it, it, it was, it, it could, if they wanted candy, it could spontaneously happen. And you weren't allowed to have things like candy, Oreos, Funyuns, those are the kind of snacks you wanted, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, when they remove sugar from your diet, do you remember feeling a lot better and less hyper? No. Okay. Do you remember telling that to a doctor, a Dr. Martin? Is he bald? I don't know if Dr. Kathleen Martin is bald. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, I don't. Sorry, I don't remember. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to maybe look at that medical record? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just give me one moment. Um, your mom would do your laundry? Uh, at a point where I would, uh, we would alternate times doing laundry. So, like, I would do the clothes, she would do the clothes, then I, the next day I would do the clothes. Yeah. But, okay, so it was like a rotation of everyone doing laundry. Is that fair yeah, to say? just me and, well, me and, and my mom and, uh, and s occasionally. Okay. So you, your mom, and I would sort of rotate who does the laundry. Yeah. Fair? Okay. Yes. So that was a chore that everybody shared? Not everybody. Okay. That was a chore that the three of you shared? Yes. Okay. Um, you stated in direct examination that sometimes uh, you, well, let me put it this way. You said in Florida you got three meals a day. You'd never feel hungry, right? I felt hungry, yeah. Okay. Do you recall uh, a conversation that you had with Detective Sharp? Yeah. Approach. All right, objection sustained. Rephrase. Robert, in Florida, did you feel like you ate enough food? Yes and no. Okay. Do you remember? So your answer is yes and no? I, I want to say I don't, eat, I don't fully recall. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to look at a uh, conversation that you had with the detective? Yes. Okay. I'm going to direct you to page 71 of a transcript of your interview with Detective Sharp, and it's towards the bottom, okay? Let me know when you're done reading. And he asked about the home and asked if you got enough food to eat, right? Yes. And you said you did? Yes. That's what you told the detective? Yes. I want to talk a little bit about sometimes... Um, I guess kind of the way you feel or some of your actions in general. Is it fair to say that you get angry sometimes impulsively? Yes. Sustained. Can I approach, Judge? You can approach.
All right, the objection sustained. Ms. Murad, you may continue. You may. We're almost done. I know you've been up there a long time. Now, in Florida, you did, and even in Arizona, um, you said that that door was not always locked, right? The door in the garage to Arizona. I'm sorry. Um, in Florida, the door was not always locked, correct? Uh, yeah, the door was always locked. In Florida? Yes. So there was a time when, for example, was walking into your door while you were playing Legos. Do you remember that? No. If the state admits ring video and it shows that, is, is it fair to say that that door was open at that time? Yes. If the I video shows it was open? I do not recall uh, him walking into my room. I recall that in Arizona, but not in Florida. Okay. All right, so you just testified that in Florida the door was always locked, right? What, uh, after we moved back. Okay, so most recently in Florida, yeah? yes? State, I'm referring to pages 164, lines 25 to 165, line 1 and 2. You may. So we talked about a deposition that you gave. You remember that, right? Yes. And that was, uh, you don't have to say where, but it was in a little room, and I was there, Ms. Coakley was there, right? Yes. And you were under oath to tell the truth? Yes. Okay. I'm going to hand you two pages of that deposition. So I'm going to point you to the bottom of page 164, starting on line 17 all the way to 165, line four. Can you take a look at that for me and look up when you're done? All right. After you've looked at that, you were asked if that room in Florida was always locked and you said that it was not always locked, right? Yeah. Ring video of inside that room during the time that you were in Florida, they'll be able to see what happened in the room. That's fair to say, right? Yep. Okay. We talked about a lot of those behaviors. Um, is it fair to say that sometimes you can't control your impulses? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Is it fair to say that sometimes those things, those specific things that we talk about, they can cause harm to other people? Sustained. When you do something like uh, ride a bike really quickly and your brother gets hurt in the face, that causes harm to him, right? Yes. Okay. And when you do something like um, hit another student, that causes harm to them, right? I do not, what's your, yeah, hitting a student causes harm, but I do not recall hitting a student 
Okay. Um, you remember we were just talking and you said that you put your finger and your, um, your, your finger and your thumb on a student's throat at one time? That was horse playing and it was not intentional for them to be harmed. Okay. But it is something that could hurt somebody, right? Yes. When Tim and Tracy would discipline you, it was always in response to something that you did. Yes. And sometimes it would also be in response to something that you did that could cause you harm. Give me an example, please. Do you remember almost starting an electrical fire in Arizona? Uh, like playing with the outlet? Yeah. And that did almost cause an electrical fire? No. Okay. It didn't, I, know, I know how to prevent one. I'm sorry? I, uh, I, um. Take your time. Um. Yeah, I remember playing with that outlet. And that's something that could have hurt you? Yes. And it's something that could have hurt other people in the family, right? Yes. May I have one moment, Judge? You may. No further questions. All right, thank you, Ms. Murad. Redirect, Ms. Coakley. That incident um, with playing with the outlet, was that in Arizona? Yes. Was that in the first room in Arizona inside the house? No. Um, so in the time frame in Arizona, was, were you doing that to try and get out of the room? Uh, not exactly. I was just trying to, uh, you know, I was a curious mind at that age, so I didn't curious? know what I was doing. Were you bored? Yeah. Did you not have a lot to do? Yeah. When Overall, you can answer. Was there a lot of stuff to do in that room? Now, you talked about the situation that happened with when you fell off the bike. Yeah. Um, was that an intentional act by you? Nah, we were, we were, I was just playing too roughly. With him? It, was that in Arizona? That was in Arizona, yes. Okay, was it on a bike? Yes. And what were you doing? I was pushing him around on the little tricycle. Okay, so you're pushing your little brother on the tricycle? Yeah. Were you going kind of fast? Yeah. Was your little brother, uh, what was his reaction while you were pushing he him? He was laughing, having some fun. Okay, so were you having fun with your brother? Yeah. How did it be happen that he fell and hit his face on the after? So I tripped on the flagstone, and then I kind of I then that, that trip I pushed me a little too far, and the bike fell over in his face. So was that an accident? Yes. Um, now I want to talk about some of the incidents, um, some of the things that you have told us um, that you did. Um, let's talk for a second about Immaculate Heart. What kind, what grades were you in Immaculate Heart? Fourth and fifth. Okay, so you're in elementary school? Yes. Um, so the incident that they, that the defense asked you about that happened at sunrise that you say you don't remember with the punching another child, is that before Immaculate Heart? Yes. So you're like in third grade? Yes. Well, I was in Sunrise uh, in fourth grade for, I'd say, about um, uh, like around, for around um, November. Okay, so fourth grade. <clears throat> yeah. For, fourth grade is when, is when they, so you're in elementary school when that happened? Yeah. Um, and then the incident um, that we talked about with the pushing, you said it was horse, rough horse playing with another kid with the hands on um, pushing yeah. the pressing against his neck. Is that also in elementary school when that happened? Yes, that was in fifth grade. In fifth grade, so you're like 11 years old? Yes. The incident where you went into class um, and made an announcement about, what grade are you in then? Fifth grade. So you're 11 years old? Yeah. Uh, why were you mad at your sister? Uh, because I couldn't get the snacks that she wanted. Well, the full story is, I couldn't share food, but I was able to share her food with others and get the snacks that she wants, and I wasn't allowed to do that. 
And so did the fact that you and your sisters had different rules and abilities, is that something that caused you frustration? Yes. Um, as a child? Yes. And at that point um, in fifth grade, when you're 11 years old, are you already in the room in the garage before that happened? No, I was. Or are you not I sure mean, really when that, sure. when the garage happened I, uh, in, I in relation to the fifth grade? Uh, uh, in fifth grade, I was put in the box in fifth grade. Uh, but you're not sure before, this is before or after? Before. That's okay. a, the only time frame I can remember. Okay. Now, they also asked you about some things that happen um, at basis, and they had said a box cutter, and you started to say it wasn't really a box cutter. What was it? It was a little, it was a little scapel, that's it. A, a, a scalpel? Yeah. Like a little, it just had something that had a little sharpness to yeah. it? Over. So something that had a little sharpness to it, it was small? Yeah, it was, it was, it was like, it was, like, it was like a, Yeah, it was just the tool with a serrated edge. Did you bring that to threaten anyone? No. Did you bring that to hurt anyone? No. Did you threaten anyone with it? No. Uh, did you just bring it to show people? Yeah. I was, I was in sixth grade and not, and hey, look, I found a cool tool in the toolbox. Okay. At that point in sixth grade, are your parents already having you live in the structure in the garage yes. when that happened? Now, I want to talk for a second about um, uh, some of the computer stuff. Yeah. Did you have an interest in electronics? Yes. Do you like to take things apart? Yes. Um, is that some of the times when you would take things, would you take them apart? Yes. Some of the Some of the devices? Yes. And then would you try and put them back together? Yes. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned, uh, they mentioned like that there, at some point during your childhood in Arizona that you went to some doctor visits. That was something that Ms. Murad asked you about. Um, in your life, have you, did your parents take you to the doctor? Yes. Okay. Did they take you to the doctor? Is your, your recollection in your childhood of going to the doctor every week? Not every week, but at least every, before every school year. Do you mean like a pediatrician or like a psychiatrist? Did they take you to sometimes like a therapist or a psychiatrist? I remember seeing a therapist once or twice in Florida, but not. I'm talking about Arizona. Not, Arizona, uh, I don't think so. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you a second about, um, they asked you about, in Florida, did you sometimes break the rules? Yes. Um, and you said that sometimes it could be as much as five times a week. Yeah. That you would break the rules. Yeah. When we're talking about breaking the rules, are you breaking the rules in a way that hurts the physical safety of anyone that you live with? Are you hurting anyone intentionally? No. Are you hurting yourself intentionally in Florida when you're breaking the rules? Possibly. Okay. Um, are you doing things like stealing candy? Yeah. Okay. Um, and not talking to your parents when they want you to answer? Yeah. Doing things like having a bad attitude? Yeah. I, I missed the first objection. Was it? I would object to All right. I'm going to sustain that. Rephrase. So when we're talking about um, breaking the rules that defense asked you about in Florida, those, the way that you're breaking the rules is not hurting any of your siblings intentionally. Or is it hurting any of the siblings? Sustain as to the original question overruled as to the rephrased. Is it hurting your siblings intentionally? In, we're talking about in Florida. No. Now, Ms. Murad asked you um, whether or not the punishments that your parents would do was in response to you um, breaking one of their rules. The type of punishment you got, did that punishment cause, was that punishment traumatic for you? Uh, or was being in it that was, room? It was an unusual, but 
Was being in the room dehumanizing for you? Yes, it was. That's all the questions I have. All right. Uh, does this conclude this witness's testimony? Um, let me just take the video off for a second. All right, you can step down. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> okay. All right, so he is not excused uh, from the proceedings altogether. Okay. For this witness, um, which exhibit number was it? 16? 16? I, you can go ahead and publish 16 now if you'd like. All right, go ahead and get set up. And uh, since um, the witness, the last witness is sequestered, he cannot remain in the courtroom uh, at this point. Just let him know that, Ms. Copeland, what that means. Okay. All right, we're going to take a, another five-minute break to get set up for the next witness. Uh, so it'll be very quick, so don't get too comfortable. Uh, and we'll let you know when we're ready for you. All right. Did you want to do the publishing first? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do the publishing first, and then the, I'll wait here while you do that, and then we'll let you go. Okay, so the, the exhibit has been published at this point. All right, the jury may retire to the uh, jury room. All right, Ms. Coakley, since this is going to be a short setup, I'll remain in the courtroom so that we can start right back up. You're on number uh, 1 through 15 is in evidence, so 16 is the next number. <clears throat> All right, court is back in session. Um, Ms. Coakley, are you ready to call your next witness? All right, Mark, um, Ms. Murad, Mr. Wahidi, are you ready? All right, so let's get started. Go ahead and bring the jurors out. All rise. Jury in. Everyone may be seated. Ms. Coakley, call your next witness. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. All right, Ms. Coakley, you may begin. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury and spell your last name? Uh, yes, my name is Christopher Lowe, L-O-W-E. Uh, who do you work for? I work for the Jupiter Police Department. And what do you do for them? I am the digital forensic agent for the Jupiter Police Department. How long have you been um, total with the Jupiter Police Department? Just over nine years. Are you a sworn police officer? I am. Um, and you said that right now you're the digital forensic examiner for the Jupiter Police Department? That's correct. What does that mean that you do? So what I typically do is I assist uh, investigations anytime there is a digital media or uh, digital devices involved, and I'll assist with processing that. Uh, so sometimes in cases there might be cell phone evidence or other, or other types of digital evidence? That's correct. Um, and so you assist the officer? Yes, I'll assist either officers or detectives. Now, are you, like, involved in the witness statements or otherwise involved in the investigation of a case? Typically, I'm not. In, uh, as the a digital forensic examiner for the Jupiter Police Department, did you assist Detective Andrew Sharp in his investigation of Tim and Tracy Farriner? I did. Um, what kind of digital evidence did you assist him with in that case? So I assisted uh, Detective Sharp with the, the download of... Uh, Search warrant, search warrant results from uh, Ring through Dropbox. Okay, tell me what, what's Ring. Are you familiar with what Ring is? Yeah, so Ring is a, it's a manufacturer of 
home security cameras and uh, what they allow users to do is observe live or recorded footage via their mobile device or uh, computers. And that recorded footage, um, from is that something that Ring keeps possession of or a copy of on their servers? They do. Um, and if a police department has a search warrant, will Ring provide that information to the police department? They will, and they did. Is that what happened in this case? Did the Jupiter Police Department obtain a search warrant for the any video from the Farragher's Ring cameras? Yes, a search warrant was obtained. Now, um, and you said that uh, you help somehow with the Dropbox. How, when, when Ring returns or responds to your search warrant, how do they give the data to you? Uh, the way this transpired was Detective Sharp forwarded me an email with a link to a Dropbox folder. And that Dropbox folder was created by Ring subpoenas. Ring subpoenas uploaded the search warrant results to this folder. I then accessed the folder, uh, observed that there was 11 subfolders and nearly 20,000 videos within. I downloaded those uh, contents onto a physical hard drive, and that hard drive was then placed into evidence. So when Ring responds to a search warrant, do they let your, you as the police officer like go through their servers yourself? They do not, no. They provide, do they just provide the data to you that is responsive? They provided the data to the Dropbox folder. Uh, of which they are the owner of the folder, and I would just have permissions to view and download. Um, you said that there are tw almost 20,000 files. That sounds like a lot of data. Correct. Um, on average, the files in there, those 20,000 files, how long is each one? Each file, uh, which uh, in uh, specificity, they were all uh, video files, except for a few Excel files. Uh, they were approximately one minute in length. Okay. Uh, did that make sense in the light of the type of um, evidence you usually get from Ring or that Ring hack? Yeah, so in my experience, um, users uh, with Ring are able to customize the length of videos that are recorded, but typically a uh, one-minute video is uh, the, the standard from Ring. So does Ring, um, is when Ring is collecting or preserving the videos from their Ring cameras, are they preserving like an entire continuous stream? Or is it done a different way? No. So uh, the majority of the videos, uh, even when, uh, well, let me back up. The, the videos are typically motion-activated recordings. If the motion occurs for more than that one-minute time period, then the video is stopped and then restarted and a new video is continued. So, for example, a five-minute uh, interaction where there's motion would have approximately five videos individual videos of approximately one minute. So if, for example, it was a doorbell camera and it's night and there's no movement, there's not going to be any recordings of that time frame. Is that, am I saying, is that accurate? Um, is it possible though, because it's motion activated, that some of, the some of the videos may capture things that have no relevance at all to the case or the investigation? Absolutely. Um, any videos that would record maybe someone sleeping, it would, they toss and turn, it would record that subject uh, moving, but then uh, there would be a long period of time while they laid still before another uh, recording occurred. Or like a front door video camera, would that get uh, front, something, maybe the neighbors moving? It could, yes. Um, and that would activate it, but that might not necessarily be of importance to That's your right. investigation. Right. Uh, so then does it become a situation where you have to find some way to manage all of this, this amount of data or go through it, organize it, categorize it? Yes. Um, so I, I find personally the, uh, the, the technique used uh, that I utilized in this investigation was to go through and um, notate time frames and then categorize that into the appropriate folders of dates and times associated. Now, does all of the data that was returned to Ring, does all of it come, come to you with the information about the time frame, the time and date? Did all of the videos have that information? No. As I mentioned, there was 11 subfolders within that main folder that was provided by Ring. Of those 11 subfolders, four of them contained Excel spreadsheets that had timestamps associated with file names. And then uh, the other, uh, that would be seven, did not include that Excel spreadsheet. Uh, again, of those 11 sub, of those 11 subfolders, five of them included uh, videos that were time stamped 
their file name was actually a version of a timestamp, uh, so that was also another way to, to notate um, ways to categorize the, uh, the videos. Now, um, did you, um, <coughs> were you able to see, um, or the information that you provided, is it all, or they, that was provided back to Ring, were you able to tell that it's all from the Ferreter's household based on just the looks and what the content of the videos is? Yes. Um, is it all from one camera? It is not. Okay, tell me more about that. So, of those 11 subfolders, uh, I looked through uh, a cursory search of the folders to, to understand what we had received back. And each uh, subfolder contained, again, uh, hundreds if not thousands of videos, but each file had a thumbnail associated with it. And what a thumbnail is, is just a, it's a small image representation of the video that's associated with. So I was able to see through the thumbnails in each of the folders, the camera views associated with the folder. So there were uh, approximately seven, seven different views provided of those 11 subfolders. Now, um, did you ultimately locate data related to the, uh, the structure in the garage where it was kept? Yes, after looking through the, uh, the subfolders, uh, if I can refer to my notes, I can provide you with the actual folder the, the data was contained in. You don't need to give me the folder. We don't okay. need to know that. But, but yes, I was able to locate the videos associated with the camera located within the, the structure, the enclosure in the, uh, the garage. And did you, based on looking at that folder, was that camera always in that room? No, it was not. It was originally set up in the kitchen, then moved to what I would describe as a living room, and then subsequently moved to the enclosure. Um, and when approximately does it start recording the events that happened in that enclosure? On what date? Yeah. On January 5th. Now, did you, for the purposes, um, for me, did you create a, uh, a, a USB or um, the, the data that just pertains to the room for the purposes of trial? I did. Um, did you take all of the videos as they applied to the room between January 5th and then January 28th, which is the last day? Yes. Um, did you subcategorize sub each of those files, though, for convenience based on date? Yes. Permission to approach um, will be Six, 16, 16 is your next number, yes. And permission to approach granted. approach
you. This very tiny let me uh, let me state my uh, um, ruling on the record. All right. So the objection is overruled in part and sustained in part for the reasons stated at sidebar. All right. Now you may proceed, Ms. Coakley. Yes, I do. Uh, is that the USB drive um, that you put all of the videos in the, that from the Ring camera that were provided by Ring for the room? Yes. Um, between January 5th and January 28th? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, the state like moving into evidence. All right, so uh, same objection that was made at uh, sidebar. All right, so same ruling. So the court will receive and accept um, states exhibit 16 in evidence uh, over objection for the reasons stated on the record at sidebar. <clears throat> now, I want to just talk to you for a second so we can kind of explain to the jury how things are organized on here okay. um, for their purposes if they need to look at it later. Okay. So, so on this USB drive, you indicated that there is an index and then there are 23 separate file folders, one for each day. Is That's that right. accurate? Yes. Tell us what is um, on, the, on the index file. So that index oh. file is simply an Excel spreadsheet where the file name is listed next to a timestamp. That timestamp indicates the beginning of that file's playtime. So I think we're going to show it to the jury here, and I'll make these a little bit bigger. So the far left, my left column, is that the file name um, for each file that's in the Excel spreadsheet? So the, the far left column under start timestamp? The, the oh. one all the way over here that ends in MP4. Yep. So that would be the file name associated with the video, yes. Okay. So when we look, we're going to open the folders in a minute, but when we look at each file name, uh, there is a .mp4. That is the file name. Yes, that's correct. And then you said that this one has the timestamp. So the file name that is 16407813050. Um that timestamp would that be December 29th, 2021? That is correct. And it says 123505Z. What is Z? So Z stands for Zulu time, which is also um, can be UTC. So what we do is we just need to take into account our time zone and subtract. Because this was in December and January and prior to daylight savings, we would subtract five hours for our Eastern Standard Time. Is Z Zulu time Z or UTC Zulu. time something that's commonly used by electronic service providers it is. like Ring? Yes. Um, so in order to figure out what time these are, you just subtract five from whatever that time is, and that is the Eastern Standard Time? That's correct. Is there a way also to tell the time just based on this number here? Yes. So that file name is actually in a timestamp format. That timestamp is called Unix Epoch Time. And what it notates is the number of seconds or milliseconds that have passed since January 1st of 1970. So a simple online converter, you place the file name number into that converter and it will provide you with the timestamp as provided on the left hand side. Can you do that math in your head? I cannot. No, you have to use a converter. So the easier way yes. to do to get to the same answer is to just to subtract five. Correct. Okay, now I want to talk about um, just so because this is going to be the jury's evidence, so they're going to be able to look at it if they wish. Um, let's talk about what's in the folder. So the first day you said was January 28th. When we open each, I'm sorry, January 5th. When you open up each file, we see all of these. And what are these? So those will be the, the file names, and just the, they'll be the video files themselves. Okay, so for every single one, each one of these days is filled with video files, and each of these files is about a minute long? That's correct. And are they roughly in, like, are they in chronological order, starting from the top to the bottom? Uh, as long as they're properly sorted within the folder, yes. And so we just take that put it in the Excel spreadsheet, and that's how we know what time is at. Yes, or that converter, but yes. Or the converter. Or. And so if we go through every single one of these, there's just videos upon videos. That's correct. Now, um, 
like we said, have you had the opportunity to go through them to, deter, to, to kind of highlight moments of interaction between the defendant and the child? I have. Um, and are there vast periods recorded where maybe nothing is really happening? Yes. Um, like when the child is sleeping? Correct. Maybe moving in their sleep, that would have recorded minute videos? That's correct. Okay. Are there also moments um, recorded that categorize the interactions between uh, the child and the defendant? Yes. Um, were you able to observe roughly time periods of how long he, uh, the child is in the room? Yes. Uh, tell me roughly some uh, of the time periods that you were... Overall. So, yes, uh, in observation, I observed the, the child within the enclosure for excess of three hours at times uh, during the day and more than 10 plus hours overnight. Now, did you observe periods during the day in which the child um, was in the enclosure without any lights on? Yes. Um, and what was the observation of the, some of the time frames for that? I'm sorry? The time frames for that. The, time, the durations? For, yeah. An estimate. Yeah, uh, hours. Now, um, in order to make this much data kind of uh, understandable, um, did you make some notes for yourself about when some of those interactions occurred? Yes, yeah. Um, and then did we, or did I, then convert some of that into um, montages of the videos? Yes. And have you had a chance to look at that? I have. Um, and just so that we kind of understand what we're looking at when we look at the montage, are those parts of the day in which there are um, interactions? They are. It's when he leaves and when he comes in? Yes. And then when the parents come in? Correct. And so the times in between, uh, would it be fair to say that those times in between are times where he's like still in the room? Yes. Or still outside the room? Correct. Depending on if he left or came in? Yes. Okay. Um, now, uh, permission to approach what will be state 17, which is that composite exhibit. You can approach. Approaching with state 17. Uh, do you recognize that? I do. Did you have a chance to look at it? I did. Um, is that the composite exhibit that I'm talking about? It is. So does it include not every single one of these videos? Correct. But the videos where there is an action or an interaction? Yes. So leaving, coming in, yes. those types of things. Yes. And one for every single day. Right. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to move it into State 17. Any objection? All of the objections are already raised, Your Honor. All right. So the same ruling with respect to um, 16, which means 17 uh, will come in evidence over objection. Um, but I want to note that with respect to 17, it is not all of the um, uh, files that are in 16. It is a subset of those files representing actual interaction or, or Yes. Contact. Okay. All right. Good enough. And you're, this is kind of like to start publishing. Uh, I'm not going to publish all of it, but start okay. publishing. Okay. Um, what's the time frame that you're looking at in terms of what you have to publish? Just, just, just so I know for time uh, purposes. I mean, I'll probably do about half an hour to 30 minutes right now, but then there's going to be a lot more. Okay. All right. It, it should, it's your show at this point, so um, you're going to publish what you're going to publish at this point. If it's in evidence, I'm fine with you publishing it. And the jury already understands what publishing means. It means actually showing you what has been uh, received by the court in evidence. And I would just um, point out to the jury, this is a subset. Uh, you can actually view the entirety of the videos if you like to do that as part of your deliberations. Yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that. Uh, Ms. Coakley, can you move the podium back so that there's unobstructed view. Does this, this does not. It does have audio, Your Honor, so we might need to. It does have audio, so we need to mute it.
Does anyone mute the audio? No. All right, I just want to make sure. I thought this is what you're doing. Oh, no. Okay. Of explain what we're seeing. So this is the January 5th video. Is this the very first day that the can you got um, that Bring provided information for inside the room? Yes. Um, and now we're looking at some data that's displayed on the screen prior to the video. Is this the file name that we were talking about before? Each video has a file name, that first long number. It is. Um, that's also the epoch time if we have the calculator. Yes. And then the time below is the UTC time? Yes. Or the Zulu time? Correct. And then the that's the conversion? Correct, yes. And you took a look to make sure I did it right? Yes. Okay. Um, and so that, for each one, is the video that then proceeds it? Correct. For those one-minute videos? Okay.
Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on in for a second. Because I don't like, because there's, I, you can see like the carpet that's behind the wall, and if I want to sit right there, I want to see these pictures because I want to be on right under the AC, and I don't want that wire right there on the desk. No, I'm gonna get a light. Now you gotta put that back. I want that desk right against that wall. 
Hang on. Uh, yeah, right now. Let's just do this. Put the stuff out of here for right now. That gets. Just keep lying. 
You lied earlier when I asked you. You can't. Look at this apparently. Okay. 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 I'm going to open everything up.
February 5th of the video. Um, is there a similar video for every other day of the week for the time frame that was recovered by Ring? There is. Now, um, we see that the Eastern Standard Time is on, um, is converted. Is there one video where there is not the Eastern Standard Time? Yes. Did you look at that and do the conversion for me? Yes. Okay. Can you, let's talk about that now quickly. We are going to look at the other videos, but just so when we get there, um, we know, is that the day, the last day in the room, which is January 28th? That's correct. So the first video, that is the epoch time uh, for January 28, 2022. Can you tell us, and I will keep track, uh, what that very first time is? Yeah, so I'm going to refer to my notes. But the time for that would be 11, 21, and 35 seconds UTC converted to Eastern Standard Time. That would be 6, 21 in the morning, 35 seconds. Okay. And um, so 6, 21 in the morning is the first video. What's the next? To go just go through what the next videos are. Yeah. In chronological order. Yeah. Do you want me to give you the uh just give us the conversion time to Eastern Standard times Time? Yes. To Eastern Standard. Okay. Right. So the next one's gonna be six forty three and seven seconds Eastern Standard. All right, go ahead. The next one would be six forty four, thirteen seconds. Right? The next would be seven ten and four seconds AM. The next would be 7.20 and 44 seconds Eastern. Go ahead. The next would be 7.21 and 50 seconds AM, and that's Eastern Standard Time. The following would be 7.57 and 23 seconds Eastern Standard Time AM. Uh, the next would be 8.31 and 8 seconds Eastern Standard Time, again in the morning. And then finally, 9.02 and 38 seconds Eastern Standard Time, and that would be in the morning still. And then that's the last time that um, the victim in this case is depicted in the room. Correct. Is 9.02 a.m. on January 28th, 2022. That's correct, yes. Uh, there's one other one that's missing, right? Yes. Which On January 17th? 16th. 16th? Yep. And what, what time is missing on that one? So on the, uh, the first video, the time that's missing is 5.23 and 44 seconds. A.M. Eastern Standard Time. All the rest of them have the appropriate yes. Eastern Standard Time, right? Yes. Um, now, I want to talk about the fact that so there were some things that were picked up on additional cameras as well, right? Yes. Um, I want to show you a few videos. Uh, we've heard um, it, so far in this case that on occasion uh, the victim in this case was asked to rape uh, or pick up shells outside the home. Was some of that um, recorded or found on some of the ring camera videos um, that you, the return, came back on? Yes. Uh, um, permission to approach? Granted.
All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short 10-minute uh, break uh, to get technology set up. Uh, we will finish in the normal time today, so, um, and I wouldn't even take a break now, but for the technology that we need to transition for. All right. All right, court will be in recess for 10 minutes. Technology. All right, we're back in session. Um, Ms. Murad and Mr. Wahid, have you had the chance to do what you need to do? I'm doing it right now. I'm starting the program. Okay. How much more time? Two, two, two left. Okay. Ms. Coakley, how long is this next um, publishing? Um, it's going to be short. And then this is just I plan on breaking today about five minutes to five, uh, so I, that's the reason I'm asking. Mark, so that he left, he didn't come back. He didn't have to tell him he wasn't. He was persona non grata. Uh, um, I typically like the blinds open so I can see the view, but I understand that with the cameras, it, it, it probably creates too much light for them. Yeah. No, no, it's fine the way it is. I, you know, without the cameras, I, I prefer to have the view. Yeah, here you're looking at the uh, inner coast. <laughs> We're good? Okay, Ms. Coakley, you ready to proceed? All right, Mark, you can bring the jurors out, and we'll get started. And I'm sorry, Ms. Coakley, how long did you say you think the, the publishing? These are like, I'm just going to show like two minutes. Right, so when you get around close to ten minutes till, start to look for a stop off. I'm going to be done with direct in a minute because I'm oh, not going to okay. publish with everything with him on the stand. Okay. All right, I'm with you. All right. I might have to call him back like tomorrow briefly, but for. Jury entering. All right, everyone may be seated. All right, Ms. Coakley, you may continue. Um, I showed you what's going to be marked for evidence of states 18, um, which, am I 18? Am I right, Madam Clerk? Uh, your next exhibit is 18. Thank you so much. 18, um, one of them was a video, uh, were they, I showed you two different USBs, correct? Correct. Um, and did you recognize the videos in both? Yes. Are they from the doorbell angle camera um, uh, from the Ferreter's home? Yes. Um, and they're just like a selected four or five videos for each of the two topics, correct? Yes. Um, and the first one that's going to be marked as States 18 involves the shells. Are those the true and accurate videos that you received from uh, Ring? Yes. Um, Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to move them into evidence as States 18. Okay, Ms. Murad, you're going to renew your objection made at sidebar. All right, so um, the court's ruling at sidebar will remain the same, so the court receives and accepts States Exhibit 18 in evidence uh, over objection as uh, stated at sidebar. 
And states 19, um, you reviewed as well, does that also show a similar view, but this time the child, instead of with the shells, is raking leaves? Yes. And it also try, shows him going, trying to get in the house and it not being open. Um, overall. Yes. Are they true and accurate depictions of uh, the videos that you received from Ring? Yes. Now, these two um, video ring cameras, we talked a lot about the date and time associated with the videos in the room. Did ring provide the data for the date and time for these videos? I did not observe uh, date and time associated uh, files. And the file name um, for these, is it the same way where we could just put the file name in or is it a different, they, did they use some sort of different uh, file naming system it, for that? It is, it is not the same. Uh, format as the previously observed files. Uh, it has a, a unknown to me uh, reason of creation. It's, it is not the epoch or the Unix timestamp that we had previously gone over. And that's just Ring didn't provide you that information? Correct. Um, and so in this case, you don't know whether or not Ring preserved that information or if maybe the way that the cameras were set up weren't set up to retain that type of information. Correct. Now, um, the, we're, there's only like four or five videos on each one. Were these part of a much longer uh, uh, depiction of the same thing over and over? Yes. Uh, so the child, Microphone. Okay. So the child doing the rocks, that happened over a much longer, there's many more videos of him doing the same thing over and over. Yes. So these are just for, to illustrate. Correct. Okay. So let's go to uh, space 18 and just take a look at one. And just for the record, I'm publishing 705085752566068 For 18, right? For eight, uh, from, that's on 18. And you're not at 19 yet, right? No. Okay, all right, good. All right, so you're asking for permission to publish uh, Exhibit 18 that's received in evidence, correct? Yes. All right, granted. find a place for him. Right too heavy for the garbage. Not yet in a, evidence. Oh, every time we into evidence in case 19, the same objection, same ruling, and um, same latitude to the defense and the cross. All right, 19 is received in evidence. <laughs>
Okay, uh, Cross. Agent Logan, there were 21,000 videos uh, that you were provided, about 21,000? Over 20,000. Okay, um, and there's ring camera, as you know, you saw kind of outside the garage, so you can see into the back area, right? Okay. Is that a yes? Uh, outside of the garage to see into the back area? Oh, I'm sorry. Outside the front garage that you can see the front yard. Yes. Okay. There's also a ring camera like the jury just saw on the front door. Yes. There's a ring camera in the room. Correct. There's a ring camera in the living area. Yes. So you can see uh, walk about freely in the living room. Okay. Is that a yes? There, there's one in the living room, yes. Okay. And you've reviewed all the videos? Of I've reviewed videos of the camera placed in the enclosure. Okay, so you have not reviewed any of the other videos, is that right? I spot checked a few of the videos in other folders when uh, determining where the videos for the enclosure were located. Understood. There's also a ring camera sort of on the back patio of the home so that you can see, um, I mean, it's really like a back patio, backyard area, is yes. that fair? Correct. And then I think there's one or two other cameras, correct? Yes. And of course, the state hasn't presented all of that to the jury, they've only presented. Sustain. So rephrase the question, Ms. Moran. At this point, what you've seen is not all of those videos that have been presented to the jury, right? Objection. Uh, overruled. Correct. Okay. Um, those are all the questions I have, Judge. I have this witness under a defense subpoena to admit my own videos. All right, so he's not excused at this point, That's but there, is there any redirect? He's sequestered. All right, there is some redirect. All right, you may proceed, um, Ms. Coakley. nothing to do with this case that show none of even the parties in this case correct um, and it's a amount of data that's almost unmanageable yes um, and so the part of the crime in this case all of that has been a, um, admitted into evidence correct yes nothing further okay all right, I'm going to overrule that. The jury will ultimately decide that once I read the instructions at law. All right, sir, that concludes your testimony today. However, you are not excused uh, from all proceedings yet, so you remain under subpoena, uh, which means that you still are sequestered, so you cannot be in the courtroom to listen to any other testimony of the witnesses until your testimony is complete. Understood. All right, thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, thank you. All right, so we have... Uh, just a very few minutes left before five. Do you have another witness ready that was short or? I, I don't have another witness. I do have additional videos to publish, Your Honor, but they're probably close around in the I can look at the next one. How long it is. I was going to break around 10 minutes to five, so that's only five minutes. Do you, um, I don't have a five minute video. All right. How long, how long a video do you have? All right, so that's going to be too long. All right, that's good news for you today because that means that we're going to um, break just a little bit early. Um, we're going to follow the same schedule tomorrow as we follow today. You'll check in with the jury office at 9.15. Be up here at um, 9.45 to meet with Mark, and he'll bring you into the jury room. Um, shooting for a 10 o'clock sharp start time again tomorrow. Uh, we are still in the state's portion of the case, and they will continue to be presenting evidence uh, as part of their case. Uh, same instruction that I gave you last night, go home. Most important thing is get a good night's rest because it's going to be a long day tomorrow. Um, have a good dinner. Don't discuss the case with each other or with anyone else. And um, most importantly, um, I shouldn't say most importantly, as importantly as any other rule I've given you, uh, make sure that you don't uh, inadvertently expose yourself to any media coverage tonight, um, either on TV or uh, through print. Or any other source. Uh, other than that, I will excuse you for the day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. All right, everyone can be seated. All right, so before I let you folks go, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, where we are in the proceedings um, in terms of timing, what's expected as far as uh, continued time for the state's case. And uh, we're still at a day and a half for the defense's 
That estimate hasn't changed, Ms. Moran. Okay. All right. So um, what's your anticipated schedule for tomorrow, Ms. Coakley? I have a, a state expert, Your Honor, and then I intend to publish about the majority of the, the video guide. Okay. So what? give me uh, give me a time expectation as to what that's going to take up of tomorrow. I think it's going to probably take the whole day. All right. So you, the, the, the expert, is the expert your last live witness? Yes. So live witness and then publishing the videos. And then um, you'll tell me if you have anything else after that. So that's going to take up tomorrow. And that's, like, really dependent on how long that expert takes. Okay. You know, if it takes more than an hour, then I'll probably publish that right. Then, so you may rest tomorrow, or you, you think you're looking at Friday now? I, I'm going to try to rest tomorrow. Okay. But in any event, it sounds like it'll be very late in the day if you do. Okay. Um, and I, you've already told me your schedule, Ms. Murad, that hasn't changed. So... Uh, that means that you're going to, if the state rests tomorrow late in the day, so you'll have all day Friday, um, which means you won't finish your case likely on Friday. You'll go into the following Tuesday. My expectation is that you would finish sometime on Tuesday. Is that? We should finish. I don't expect our case to be more than two days. Okay, so um, then there is a risk that we could go um, more than uh, into Tuesday. Because if you take the better part of two days, then uh, I'd likely start the um, closing arguments the next day um, so that the jury has as much time to deliberate after closing arguments. Um, it's only one wrinkle in the, the, the schedule right now is I'm available next. I plan on being suspended the entirety of next week, but I, I can make Tuesday available and Thursday. The only question mark is Wednesday. So I've got to figure out if we go Tuesday, Thursday next week or Somehow I can make Tuesday, Wednesday work. I don't know the answer to the question yet. I'm just raising the issue because it's looking more and more likely we're going to go into next week. Everybody kind of in agreement with that prognostication at this point? Okay, good enough then. Um, you don't really need to think about getting jury instructions to me yet um, until probably um, Friday or even Tuesday morning because um, um, it doesn't sound like um, we're going to be at the point where I would... I always need those to read them prior to the closing argument. So as we start to have better visibility as to when that's going to start, I'll give you a better idea as to when to give me the final set of jury instructions. It sounds like, Ms. Black, on the state side, you're the one working with that, so um, you, that'll be for you. Anything else I need to address before we break for the day? All right, everyone have a good evening, and uh, same schedule tomorrow. I'll see everybody tomorrow for a 10 o'clock sharp start time. What is in recess?